It's time to get activated, gamers, because you're listening to the Gigaboots Game of the Year 2023, featuring Dan and Bob Video Games. If you have any problems with any of our lists, yell at Bob. Oh, no. Chris Wolfhart. Guaranteed to outlast AAA gaming. And Dr. Agro. Sure glad I spent this whole year knowing I'd be on this podcast. This episode features outrageous categories such as... The 7th Gen Game Award. Budget Dimension of the Year. Vegas Trailer. And... Rat of the Year. So grab your nuggies and Mountain Dew, gamers! Sit back in your race car chair and get ready because the Gigaboots Game of the Year 2023 Podstravaganza starts right now! Yippee! We have survived and returned for another part of the 2023 Game of the Year Podstravaganza. We all persist. We have Bob. Here we go again. We've got Dr. Agro. Still alive. And Chris Wolfhart. I am in a live and dead super position. <laughs> Cat boy in a box. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and I, of course, am your host, Dan Video Games. Let's uh, get to these categories. We've got some good ones for today. First up, the seventh gen game award. The nominees are Alan Wake 2, Atomic Heart, Dead Island 2, Forspoken. <laughs> I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> Fort Solace and Immortals of Avium. Gentlemen, we have three votes, so let's get started. Dr. Agro, get your joke out of the way. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about uh, at all. However, if you are referring to the uh, well-known and documented fact that Dead Island 2 uh, <laughs> has not yet released uh, and is in fact an, an enormous psyop by the video game industry to pretend that they're still able to release video games. <laughs> God. I don't know uh, what they paid you to participate in this horrible betrayal of the public trust, but I feel like uh, if you would have cut me in on it, I would stop bravely preaching the truth. <laughs> How honorable. <laughs> <It'd> fucking vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. God. This may be the strongest this category has ever been. Yeah, the right? The thing is, so many of them are so strongly, so different of 7 to 10 games. Yeah. Uh -huh. <sighs> okay, my first vote's going to be for Alan Wake 2. For possibly being the only thing on this list that's like seventh gen, not derogatory. <laughs> yeah, seventh gen complimentary. <laughs> like, oh my god, you finally did it. We made it. We made a seventh gen game, and it's really good. <laughs> and it seems done, <laughs> and it looks nice, <laughs> and it runs acceptably. <laughs> no matter how that studio tells you to play it. <laughs> Mm, quick segue having nothing to do with anything I said previously. Atomic okay. Heart. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> nothing to do with anything you just said, huh? And Jesus Christ, Immortals of Avium. Yeah. Yeah, that's understandable. I get that it has it has mad 7th gen vibes when it comes to character design and certain other aspects of it. Yeah, you know, you know how Zoomers will post like "I was born too late" under under like jazz videos. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's Immortals of Avium to seventh gen games. It's like, look, it's like look, it's like looking at fucking legendary and <laughs> mind jack, and is like I, I was born, I was born too late. <laughs> I should be there with fracture. Right? Like, maybe that's how anybody would have bought it if it came out right next to fucking Homefront. <laughs> you have, like, Jack Aviumman, like, putting his hand on the mirror, and it's like, when will the mirror show who I really am? And, like, on the <laughs> other side of the mirror is some bald military guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris, you seem like you may have some strong opinions here. What are your three votes for the 7th Gen Game Award? Uh, Atomic Heart. Atomic Heart is a lot like Bioshock Infinite, and then it transparently runs out of money halfway through. 
it, it's hard to get more seventh gen than that. Dead Island 2, of course, because it's just the same game as one again. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow. It sure will be someday. God, it's fucking this guy, I swear to God. Now, let me throw out there that for spoken... Fort Solace. Damn it. <laughs> Fort Solace. It's like Fort Solace, if it had come out in seventh gen, we would have had to endure a press cycle about how brilliant it was. Hmm. Cause, yeah. Because you just walk, and you just walk, and, and you look at it, it notes and audio logs. Oh my god, how much of it was real? Uh, that was a real murderer. He killed everyone. What's the... <laughs> <laughs> how much of it was real? I don't know, man. This is like a creepy pasta. I didn't pay for this game, and somehow I played the whole thing <laughs> on my PS5. <laughs> I don't remember buying it, and it said it was a trial, but I, the trial is will I survive the game? Ooh, spooky. <laughs> It is funny how that didn't work for a single one of our viewers. They're like, wow. Yeah, they're like, nah, just, just kick me out. One in a million chance. Of all the games. Right. Of all the games for us to get for free on accident. Oh, well, anyways, hey, Bob. It's your turn now. Three votes. These are all too strong. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, I, I'm going to vote for Forspoken because I really did feel like I was thrown back in time. Is mm. I just played this game with a completely vapid plot and terrible action combat and a vapid, op empty open world. It's like, wow. Wow, this is a seventh gen. Yeah, it's also worth noting that Forspoken is just infamous, but on a giant that, open I was, world. I was about to compare it to that even, yeah. Yeah, no, it's combat is just really unenjoyable in comparison to infamous. Mm -hmm. Like, Second Son came out 10 years ago. yeah. 11 in like a couple months here from this recording date so it's absolutely insane to be like and then they just made a, uh, an infamous knockoff that wasn't anywhere near as good as the last one they made 10 years prior <laughs> Ooh. I, yeah then oh man all of these uh -huh. I'll put one for Avium he deserves it <laughs> <laughs> Avium? Is that the... <laughs> yeah, that's Jack's last name, I think. <laughs> Jack Avium? <laughs> Actually, yeah, the internet doesn't know his last name, do they? I don't think I he th has one. I think we looked this up and he doesn't have a last name. Right. Because, you know, inventing surnames. Either is not something that culture does or not something the writer wanted to deal with. <laughs> what are you talking about? That culture? He came from the real world. No, Dan, that's forespoken. <laughs> You're crossing the streams. <laughs> <laughs> the Immortals of Avium see how everything in the game will go and then do the worst thing possible. <laughs> They're like, oh, we need a DLC to explain how the Immortals planned all of this. <laughs> uh. <laughs> and my last one will be Atomic Heart. That, that was just bad Bioshock. Like, rotten Bioshock. <laughs> That's not true, Bob. It was bad Bioshock and Dead Island. <laughs> uh, yes, it was also Dead Island somehow. But somehow. I, it I became... liked it more than either of those, though. So I don't know. <laughs> well, it was really bad at being Dead Island because it didn't feel like a giant open world where you could go any direction. It was very clearly hallways. <laughs> uh, this is the hardest this category has ever been, I believe. My first vote goes to Atomic Heart. Uh, it genuinely is a master class in being a video game from from like 13 years ago, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, everything about... The only thing that isn't distinctly 7th gen is the cutscene direction, which just seems so Eurojank. Mm. It genuinely seems like Hunt the Freeman. It just... <laughs> there's something really off to how angry the faces look and how bizarre the art is. That make it like this wouldn't have succeeded. It's, they wouldn't have had anywhere near the enough money to do this during 7th Gen. Um, but everything else about it. It's half-baked ideas for how it gives you weaponry and shit. How much the beginning of it is one type of game and then it just cracks open to be something else. Oh, yeah. I even wasn't even thinking about the opening, which is just... Bioshock. Yeah, you're doing the ride from Bioshock original. Yeah. 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 No, there's a lot of Bioshock, and then you get out of that first pod, and then it just goes, I don't know what, I, I guess I'm open world. And I'm like, you don't <laughs> seem to be, bro. There are fucking literally laser electric fences everywhere to make sure I don't get more than five feet away from the road. Your map doesn't even work right. What are you talking about, open world? <laughs>
Yeah, it's uh, I think if there's one strong contender for a winner here, it's definitely got to be a tough card for that reason. Mm -hmm. Alan Wake 2 feels like we took the bones of a linear narrative story with some wide open areas, and we finally successfully made one of those that is done and amazing polish wise in a way that almost seem, makes it seem not like 7th gen to me. Yeah, when you make a 7th gen game good enough, it feels like at least the leave 7th gen. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, I'm going to give my second vote to Dead Island 2 because that is Dead Island 1. I played that game on my PS3. And you know what? With enough convincing in an FBI chamber, you could <laughs> absolutely easily by the end of the day without busting my balls up too hard or injecting me with too weird of substances, substances convince me that I played this game on my PS3. <laughs> you all heard him admit it. <laughs> no. FBI PSYOP. Dead Island 2. Not real. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to put my third vote into either for Spoken or Fort Solace. I don't know which, though. Somebody convince me. Fort Solace is so much more 7th gen than Forspoken. Forspoken is infamous, which is mostly a 7th gen franchise, but Fort Solace is like 800 different 7th gen games. I feel like most 7th gen games would try to have some sort of combat or other element to it other than walking around. That's true. There weren't a lot of medium budget, like, slowly walk around and interact with things. You know, that really came into vogue, I feel like, with, uh, go what is it, Gone Home? And that was in first person. Hmm. That sounds right. But then you had, like, the, it feels so reminiscent of, like, the Telltale games. Hmm. Like, those had choices, but they literally didn't matter. They, they could not matter. Definitively. And I feel like there was a... And that whole, that whole trend of our horror game doesn't have any combat. I absolutely see where you're coming from. And I agree to some extent. But I'm going to have to give it to Forspoken for a couple reasons, okay? Firstly, giant open world. Bland. Nothing to do. Secondly, only one city in the game. Oh my god, we died. We nearly died making it. Everyone in town is hideous. There's barely <laughs> anything to do. <laughs> Main character says some things and has some conversations that imply some weird morality in the game that's downright fucked up of like, I think it's in one of our other categories of like orphans don't have souls, basically. Or they're just like, well, I could tell they were going to commit crimes because they were homeless. <laughs> it's a it's a complicated web of uh, various <laughs> decisions in Forspoken that give you this real atmosphere of half bakedness and hollowness. Man, now just thinking about folks smoking again, I'm like, I need to add certain characters to other other <laughs> categories for this. <laughs> rat of the year? Was there a oh, good I'm rat? I don't remember. I don't think there was a good rat. Oh. <laughs> Can't blame a guy for hoping. Well, let's get this to this argument and we'll sort out these votes, see how it goes. I'm going to kill the mighty boss tones. And then I'm going to kill Disney for stealing their jingle. <laughs> I'm going to kill Walt Disney. <laughs> it won't be easy. Well, like pulls ice pick into frame. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It seems we have a winner. <laughs> it does seem we have a winner. <laughs> Atomic Heart with four votes. <laughs> I think that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's. <laughs> you can't tell me that that shit they did with how you get weapons was not is not something some gigabrained 17 <laughs> game would cook up. <laughs> right. Like you can see the bullet point in the Game Informer article, the physical Game Informer article you're holding in your hand. Yeah, it, it almost feels like uh, a lot of games ended up doing the Bioshock Infinite thing where a closer came in or someone came in and they made the game ship, but a lot of them didn't remove the traces of the game that was there prior successfully. So you always saw these loose threads of like, this is not done. Why is this here? And they go, because we planned for much more and it had to be pulled. That's kind of how the half-baked mechanics in this kind of feel like. Mm -hmm. It feels like it on paper, good idea. Execution, <laughs> you're not done. Yeah. Yeah. In some weird world, Atomic Heart would be this game where you're going around to a lot of different structures that have randomly made loot <laughs> instead of what it is. <laughs> Where it's like, go down this one long road in our shitty, shitty communist car. <laughs> <laughs> Put it in H. 
<laughs> so then we have a problem. We have a three-way tie between Dead Island 2, Forspoken, and Immortals of Avian. <laughs> Alawake 2 and Fourth Solace only have one vote each. And in an economy like this, we can't, I can't afford to give both of those a vote. I can't. It's just like, so I see those disappearing, you know? Mm -hmm. I think this really is Atomic Heart, two other games, and a runner up from the three that are yeah. tied. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we need to vote. You get two votes each Dead Island 2, Forspoken, and Immortals of Avium. Aggro. Uh, Atomic Heart. Wait, no. It, oh, wait, no. What, what, yeah. what, I, just, <laughs> I just looked at the list and my mouth opened. <laughs> He's just reading yeah, that's it. How it turns one. <laughs> that's how you know it won. It's like when I show up at a fast food place and they're like, sir, what do you want? And I just say chicken nugget. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't tell them a thing that's on the menu necessarily. They're like, how many pieces? Because I'm a child mentally at this point. <laughs> Just drunk as you've ever been walking into a KFC shouting bucket. <laughs> now, do you mean the bucket of chicken or the slop bucket, bucket. that has every single thing we make in it? Oh, do you mean no, that's a famous bowl. That's a famous bucket. <laughs> I want the chicken bucket. And then for the drink, I want the drink bucket. <laughs> Fill it so with that's a bag now. That's <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, that. selling the bucket was illegal. It turns out. And it turns out that was morally reprehensible and legally prosecutable. <laughs> Forspoken and Immortals of Avium. Bob. Yeah, Forspoken and Immortals of Avium. Oh, Jesus. Chris. Dead Island 2 and Forspoken. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I'm giving it to Dead Island 2 and Forspoken. So now we have a tie. And there's no way to solve this through voting. So we've come to terms. We must now debate. Look at Dead Island 2. Just look at it. Like, yes, Immortals of Avium has stupid characters and a dumb conceit. But it's still structured mostly like a modern game. Dead Island 2 is the same fucking game. And it's not like Dead Island 2 doesn't have stupid 7th gen plot and characters. <laughs> I mean, yeah. In fact, if anything, its plot has way stronger 7th gen vibes because it doesn't come across as a young adult novel thing, which I really think we got into the young adult fiction type of writing in games until 8th gen with Horizons and some of the others that came around then. 7th gen was all about fuck, shit, oh my god, government conspiracy, vampires. <laughs> and that's Dead Island 2, baby. <laughs> I'm willing to get on board with Dead Island 2 because <laughs> it is intensely 7th gen in a way that was disgusting to play. <laughs> I, th I thought it was a very casual, delightful time. It felt like being lobotomized. <laughs> <laughs> if moving in that game felt like trying drudging through a swamp. So yeah, that was pretty 7th gen. That's true. Hey, Agro, any last uh, radical statements that we perhaps shouldn't let you make on content that you want to just... Given that the only Dead Island game to ever actually release <laughs> literally came out on the 360 and PS3, you government marks can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is Riptide revisionism. Everyone loves Dead Island Riptide, sir. Oh, is that a fact? I think I bought it on accident on PS4, and I don't know why. Maybe it was $5? I thought Riptide was only on PS3, 362, but I don't know anymore. I thought that came in one moment. I, I just, for some reason, I'm visualizing me picking up Dead Island Riptide on a PS4. It's on PS4. I'm All mortified. Right. If I could solve the PlayStation Store puzzle that is, are these dots next to each other? Are these dots plus seven? Then I could, you know, look into whether or not I made that mistake. But the, everyone knows that is an impossible riddle. You would have an easier time with the Sphinx. <laughs> I bought Dead Island 1 on PS4, and that shit runs at 30, so no thank you. Oh, come on. <laughs> God, that sucks. Yeah. Well, that solves it for the 7th Gen Game Award. The winner is Atomic Heart with completely unanimous vote <laughs> right out of the gate. <laughs> Forspoken. In second place, Dead Island 2 in third place because it is real and on our streets aggro.
<laughs> and Immortals of Avium as runner up. I want to say congratulations to all of our candidates. You were all very valid. Even Fort Solace, which if it had Kung Fu would just be remember me in my brain. <laughs> I don't know why that is, but it is. <laughs> so we're going to move on. We're now moving on to budget dimension of the year. Hell yeah. The nominees are for Spoken's Labyrinths. Legends and lore, parentheses from Goodbye Volcano High. Oh my god. The Reverie Corridor from Trails into Reverie. <gasps> That's what the title means. Sort of. <laughs> Vampire Nests, Fred Redfall. <laughs> Chapter 12 from Disgaea 7. Identical structures on barren planets from Starfield and Tirnanog's from Bayonetta Origins. Okay, so obviously not all of us have all the experience with all of these. Uh, you know, maybe one or two people didn't play Trails into Reverie. Yeah. Let's uh, let's go over that. Yeah. I, I can explain some of these. Uh, I'll explain Legends and Lore first. Oh, damn it. <laughs> uh, in Goodbye Volcano High, the characters go and play Dungeons and Dragons, except it's called oh, Legends and Lore. Damn it. Um, this is roughly 40% of Goodbye Volcano High's game time it was transparently made after the fact by different people because it has entirely different assets from the rest of the game it is not actually voice acted they switch to animal crossing type gibberish speak and it can't mean it does not directly bring up any of the actual events of the story it vaguely <sighs> alludes to them like it like they didn't actually know for sure what was in there this is 40% of the game. That, that's really dire. That's sawdust. Yeah. The Reverie Corridor in Trails into Reverie is... So you're playing Trails into Reverie, and then a light happens, and then you're inside a weird place, and then a computer voice says, uh, I looked into the future. You're all going to get killed by the thing that's coming up now. Grind. <laughs> 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 That sounds like it's my friend in the digital age. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and it takes the form of like a weird roguelike, almost rogue. It's not literally rogue, but a, a weird, you can reset it and it refills all the treasure chests also. <laughs> and there's like missions you do in it to upgrade various mechanics. So it's literally like, we don't have a whole lot of big dungeons and stuff in this game. So here's the grinding zone. It does tie into the story later, though. Okay. Does it all look kind of the same and bad? It all looks the same, yeah. Okay. If you were to say it's higher or lower fidelity than the Forspoken Labyrinth. I would say it's higher fidelity than that because there are switches you hit that change pathways so you can get to certain... There's mechanics in the, the Reverie Corridor. Like, sometimes you'll see three treasure chests. And if you open those three treasure chests, enemies will spawn. I don't know. That sounds pretty similar with the way he's describing it. But here's the thing. Hitting the switch to open the new path didn't affect anything in Forspoken because it wasn't a branching path. It was like the only actual way forward. Like they built that mechanic in and then it didn't actually get employed in any way that mattered. These are more like floors that have like lots of paths that have stuff on them. Yeah. See, that sounds... Yeah, Much higher rent. Right. Usually those labyrinths in Forspoken work go to the bottom of this thing that's all just straight hallways. Yeah, you do 90 and degree turns and I think it's like twice. And keep in mind, I did a decent number of these, not like all of them. Mm -hmm. But there were like twice where it was like, go this way. Haha, -ha, dead end. You should go back and hit that switch. And I'm like, oh, you got me. <laughs> and then I just hit the switch every time from then on. And it was like, oh, this is always the right path. Yeah, I don't know. I just, mm. <laughs> Budget to mention, be all the budgety. Vampire Nest from Redfall. So, Bob, you're the guy who played Redfall on our stream. Yeah, but I don't remember if I played these much. I think Chris put it on the list here. Yes, I did. I put this on the list. Okay. So, in, Red, in Redfall, there's these things called Vampire Nests. They're doors that just spawn in the overworld and that can be on a building or they can just be standing in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. They take you to a procedurally generated hallway wherein you have to go through the hallway 
and then shoot a couple things and then you get a bunch of loot. They can have roguelike modifiers like this one has a bunch of low level enemies. This one has stronger enemies. This one has really strong enemies that only activate if you trig if you step in the spotlights. These seem to be the main method for progression like in terms of getting better gear. Yeah, and to people who aren't necessarily used to our vernacular yet, it, notionally, these are nature-based. This is aesthetic. Like, you see f trees and a pathway over a river and stuff, but it's a fucking hallway. It's a tunnel. It, it, it's a cave. Yeah, it's a tunnel. It's yeah. a tunnel that has, like, pieces of pieces of buildings, pieces of tree roots. Like, it's, it's very obviously built from the assets they already made. And all of these are generated from those same assets, so... It's pretty low rent. Tell me mm -hmm. about chapter 12 from Disgaea 7, though. Uh, so in, in chapter 12 of Disgaea 7, chapters in Disgaea have five maps. Four of them in chapter 12 are the same map. <laughs> hmm. Uh, the map is like 10 squares by 20 squares. It's not very big. It's like, it's literally an office. They saved a lot of money on this one. I think it worked for the story, so I, it didn't upset me, but it is it is definitely cheap. <laughs> it's very clear, like, we're feeling the value. <laughs> it's $10 cheaper than the game was last year, so <laughs> there you go. That was the $10. I'll take it. it yeah, absolutely. Uh, identical structures on barren planets. I am familiar with starfield one might say i have played an hours <laughs> of starfield um chris i assume you nominated this nope oh this one was me <laughs> so forgive me if i get a couple of these numbers wrong because starfield uh flees before your ability to retain it like water through a sieve <laughs> oh, um, at a certain so point in the story you get sp space dovahkiin shouts uh and to <laughs> collect them you have to activate the space telescope and then fly to the space telescope to talk to the guy in person because it's the future he will then give you coordinates to go to planets and you go to the planet and you walk for like five minutes in a direction because you can't fly your spaceship closer to it because fuck you and you get to the big castle thing which is it's covered in a different color of dust on every planet and you find your way to the door, which is annoying as shit if the planet doesn't have low enough gravity to double jump into the horizon. And you go into the door and you do this zero gravity float toward the light particle, not puzzle, but event. Uh, you do that like five times, it activates the thing, you go into the thing and you get the power. And then you are teleported outside where a thing pops out and you have to kill it. And it's the same thing that pops out every time oh and you kill it. And you have to do this for every power. And I think, like, you have to get, like, 12 to go through the game, and there's, like, 24 of these fucking things. And you just have to keep doing this over and over, and it's the only way to level up your space powers. This is the sort of thing that made me so depressed when I was playing Diablo 4, <sighs> where it's like, we can't even put a cool scripted event in town, because we need to instance you being in a cellar oh, in order yeah. to have the mission for the gameplay. Mm -hmm. which to be fair to some extent that probably should have been on this list we haven't you, voted yet yeah, i could you, add it yeah you could put on put in diablo uh, 4 sellers okay great i'm doing that uh for for people unfamiliar uh a weird amount of action is going down in tristram in the cellars <laughs> <laughs> a frankly bizarre amount of action is going down in the same cellar that is underneath everyone's house it, it's one room it's always the same one room imagine a thin hallway at the front of a place some sort of uh what what would what would you an enclave of sorts some sort of opening atrium right uh-huh that is a hallway turned sideways and then there's one door that goes into the big boxy room, which isn't even that big. Yeah. And that's where you fight any number of th throwaway characters and moments. 
there there's there's you know they tried to integrate these stories into the towns themselves so you run into situations where it's like someone will greet you at a door and they'll be like oh thank god you're here the child is getting possessed in the cellar quick we must go there and then you go inside and it's the same cellar that's in all these other places yeah there's probably over a hundred cellars on the map that are all identical yeah there's no like exploring these 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 specific things we're referencing are one copy and pasted instance i don't even know if they aesthetically changed at any point like if they had snow right i don't think so i feel like they all looked identical yeah part of me is like maybe i just thought they had snow because that one person used an ice spell <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it's uh it is copy and paste and it just makes me depressed whenever they try to do a thing that is important in them because it falls completely flat on its face and this was when i got a depressive episode uh, where I just went, I hate the fact modern video games are like this. Because yeah. this is an always online game. Because they wanted to make it so huge. All of these missions must be tool generated. Instead of being able to do cool authored content. Bespoke content. Right, and this would be a, a good place for the systems old Diopolis had of randomly generating, generating a dungeon. A dungeon, which just doesn't end this game. Yeah. We still haven't been in that game. No, we haven't. We need to go I, it's, find I mean, it's some not, more sellers. It's not relevant to Game of the Year unless, like, the writing gets completely insanely bad at the end. <laughs> no, let me check if dumbest thing. Uh, no. And obviously, it wouldn't be biggest dis... Uh, oh, wait. Of course. It's. Well, anyway, we have one more thing to describe. Bob, what is the Tiernanogs? Are they knights? The weird <laughs> thing about the Tiernanogs in okay. Bayonetta Origins, Sereza and the Demon or whatever... <laughs> beautiful title Kavya was really hitting it with that one <laughs> first half of the game these are great okay they're like these cool aesthetic dungeons you go into that have like large puzzles to do and a really interesting mechanic built around solving these puzzles with the two characters second half of the game they become just throwaway combat rooms just oh we spawn this five enemies kill them oh. and I'm like that's so sad this was this was incredible and then you waited the worst content in the game. <laughs> wow. Yeah. It's kind of surprising to do that hard of a shift. Yeah, it was. It really caught me off guard. I was like, oh man, I still got so much of this game left. All of these have been gray. What's happening? <laughs> man, I bet uh, Talos Principle 2 does the same thing. You know, really cool puzzle rooms, but then it becomes combat. <laughs> 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 yeah, that sucks, man. Yeah, that sucks. I think I, like, because this was still when we, you were playing through this when we were still set up in Niceville. Yeah. So a couple times I looked over and I remember seeing this style of room mm -hmm. that had puzzles early on and you playing it. And then you just seemed to be doing combat. And I'm like, that doesn't, that doesn't <laughs> look great. I don't know. Yeah. <sighs> well, we have a lot of nominees here. Let me check how many we have. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and give us four votes each because I am cruel. Uh, you know what? I'll start this time. I'm going to give it to Forspoken's Labyrinth. Uh, weird thing about this, though, I didn't hate it. That's why I did more of this than I probably should have. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I just, I was like, this is mildly enjoyable. And once the rewards got, like, not consistently good, that's <laughs> when I went, okay, yeah, maybe I just see how quick the rest of the game is. And it was like shoots and ladders, but... Like, it was just a ladder to the end of the game because there's a fourth of that game that's missing. Uh-huh. Which is really why it's so fourth. It's fourth so seventh gen. <laughs> uh, next nominee, I'm going to go ahead and give it to the Sellers. It is unreal to me that I did not remember to put that on this list when it is the same room over and over. <laughs> I think Legends and Lore is a really strong candidate uh, from Goodbye Volcano High just because... There's something really deeply screwed up about, okay, the, the plot was moving, but you're going to stop that in order to do this thing that isn't the rest of the game you signed up for, that doesn't have the budget of the rest of the game you signed up for. <laughs> yeah, that, that's maybe the harshest budget dimension I've ever seen, because imagine if you were playing a game, and it a 3D game, and it became a 2D platformer for an extended period. That's how bad it is. I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with no, but the 2D platformer was also bad. <laughs> I would no longer be okay with that. Which Sonic game was this? <laughs> Forces. <laughs> it's probably on the 3DS. I don't know. 
Oh man. Okay. All right. Um, the Revity Corridor feels like it's getting beaten by Forspoken's Labyrinth. I'm charmed by Chapter 12 of Disgaea 7. So I'm afraid I'm left to vote for the identical structures on barren plans because let me, let me be clear. The experience of exploring a planet, if you can call it that, in Starfield is already so barren and so uninteresting. The notion that they put the same damn building <laughs> on 24 planets and 12 of them are mandatory. It's like you must visit this, the 12 grand Kmarts. Oh, okay, at least I can get an IC. They're all shut down. <laughs> like th that feels awful. But the, the little Caesars is still open in there though, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, nothing could kill little Caesar. He's immortal. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and <laughs> give it to that because uh, frankly, Agro's description is horrifying. <laughs> uh with that done, uh we're going to go to Chris next. Legends and lore. Forspoken's Labyrinth. Identical structures on barren planets. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to give it to the Reverie Corridor for one reason, because it is budget in the purest sense of the word, as in the we made this to save money. You know how RPGs, well, you know, in a modern RPG, you win a fight and the characters maybe say a line or two. Maybe they have a little back and forth, depending on who you have in the party. Mm-hmm. I would like you to, to draw your attention to, to the screen cap I made. Uh, this game has like 45 playable characters and putting a video of all the unique victory quotes lasts 42 minutes. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> so that it was it was budget in the purest sense of to put the money somewhere else. Yep, they knew where to put it. <laughs> Some of these victory quotes are two minute long conversations. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I also haven't gotten over that it starts with, Alexa, am I about to get my ass whooped? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we go next to Bob. I got to give it to Forspoken's Labyrinth. It's, it would, like, I didn't actually get to fully describe it visually. And uh -huh. how these are slate walls, flat, <laughs> un or inornate in any way whatsoever. Yeah, it's just bricks. It's just a bunch of bricks. <laughs> it feels like if an ancient civilization made the building they keep the Planet of the Eight slaves in contemporary <laughs> times in, in Planet of the Apes 4. <laughs> you all watch Planet of the Fourth Planet of the Apes film, right? Of course. Okay. Good. Then that analogy worked perfectly, and everyone's on the same page. The Sellers in Diablo 4. Just truly pathetic content. <laughs> uh, identical structures in, in, in barren planets on Starfield. God, every time I think about Starfield, <laughs> it feels like this. This is everything. This is that entire game. <laughs> and I gotta give it to Turn and Og, because they broke my heart. <laughs> Yeah, that seems like a real betrayal. Okay, Agro, you get to vote, la vote last. I mean, I'm going to start with that identical structures on barren planets. Because as Bob says, it, it's, it's the whole game. The first time you do it, it's fucking amazing. And the second time you do it, your blood runs cold. And the third time you do it, you can feel silence <laughs> echoing off into <laughs> eternity. Because it is... It's emblematic. It, it's a metaphor for the whole game, which is just, oh, you beat the game? Play the game again. <laughs> That's the story. Why? How did Starfield end up having the exact same ending as No Man's Sky? I don't know. <laughs> like, it's exactly the same. There, there, there were maybe some notes cribbed from launch No Man's Sky that shouldn't have been. Uh, I'm then going to vote for Forspoken's Labyrinths because... It really felt like like they they expected you to believe that they were content and you were supposed to count it with the rest of the game. <laughs> no, my guy, this is this is dry millet you've put on plate <laughs> next to my eggs. This is not. I mean, I will survive by eating it, but this is not a meal. No, that's hash. I swear. <laughs> I will survive long enough by eating it to decide I don't want to any longer. Uh, and then legends and lore. It's if you've so ever bad. wondered it's how much sawdust so... you can add to bread before sailors notice. Yeah. <laughs> Play the tasting history hard tack. 
Click, click. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have to pay him to license that? <laughs> I, I, I wonder. And the last one, I think I'm going to have to give it to the sellers from Diablo 4 because that, that was, that's uncalled for. <laughs> you were making Diablo, you bastards. Uh, they were shipping Diablo 4. <laughs> they were expressly brought here from the wonderful world of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater to ship a fucking game. Well, let me get this in the document and sort it out. We're going to figure this out. Okay. It looks like we have fully unanimous votes on Forspoken's Labyrinth and identical structures on barren <laughs> planets on Starfield. In, uh... The tie for third place runner-up is Sellers from Diablo 4 and Legends of Lore from Goodbye Volcano High. Bob? Yeah? As the two people with the most experience with Diablo 4. Mm-hmm. I submit we should just give it to Legends of Lore. <laughs> <laughs> the Sellers are completely repugnant. They are. Uh-huh. But they're not a gameplay change like a, they aren't 40 percent of the game right how right. long do you think diablo 4 is like you know 50 hours 40 <laughs> i'm really scared to go check how much of it i've played because i know Goodbye it's gonna be getting Volcano up there. high is four and a half hours long yeah <laughs> right like there's a whole diablo there and then all these sellers kind of <laughs> yeah, some would argue there isn't even one does one Diablo. <laughs> There's at least 80% of a Diablo there. There's maybe 50%. Uh, but yeah, no, the sellers aren't the problem that it causes that though. Right, yeah. That's a larger what their goals were with the game and whether or not that went well. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, uh I, of all people, me, I cannot believe I am coming around to sort of have a antagonistic relationship with ambition <laughs> because of games <laughs> like maybe you should have just um made a diablo <laughs> just a thought instead of this bizarre open world always online son of a bitch you shipped but whatever yeah whatever i was still angrier at diablo 3 so i can't say that that was any better <laughs> Uh, so yeah, we should just give it. We should just give it to the game because here's the thing: it's forty percent of the game, right? Yeah, over no, here with I, Legends I, and Lore. Here's my thought: at the end of finishing that game, you aren't sitting there. Mm, what a delicious meal I had! No, you're like, I can't believe I swallowed that nail and I'm still alive, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so I'm for it too. Like, okay, that's, that's fine. Th then okay, so we have unanimous on Forspoken's Labyrinth and identical structures on Baron Planets and Starfield. <laughs> it is weird that we have to go. Which of these is worse? Right? Like, it, it comes down to whether, because, like, the Forspoken Labyrinths feel like, to a much greater degree, they were part of the plan. Mm hmm. The Starfield thing, it feels like they made one of them and they were supposed to be different shit later on. But nope, not. Nah, something got redlined and they just had to rubber stamp this shit <laughs> onto different points of light on the map. I don't know with how many of the power words in Skyrim are find a wall dragon attacks. Mm. But that's like fight a dragon. Like, but doesn't the monster attack you here also? You, you get teleported outside and one dude in a spacesuit comes out of invisibility and you and your companion shoot him. Right. That's worse. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think that I think Starfield, I think Starfield probably has to take this because nobody thought Forspoken would be a genre defying, life-changing ultimate game right and i think that the thing with labyrinths of forspoken is that's not the main story also, you can skip these yeah it's completely optional past the first one i think maybe it's even completely I don't think, I don't think you optional. have to do any of them yeah i thought you had to do one but i could just be wrong because i have obsessive compulsive disorder i had to do <laughs> right i saw that first one i had to <laughs> oh yeah no like you had to go down and see it what, what it was and then, and then that drive stuck with me with for longer than anyone else. <laughs> Weirdly <laughs> enough, I'm just like, no, these are fun. This, put my put my rat brain in the weird 2D maze. I'm having a good time. I I, I would have done more of my remember being. I did one and went, man, I'd do all of these if I wasn't so mad at this game. <laughs> yeah, that's that's totally fair. I was too cut up on doing the the bizarre things that didn't fit in the timeline where she goes back in time in her mind to, to fight off a horde of zombies <laughs> that don't actually exist. 
Look, that's magic. So it's excusable. <laughs> all all magic is excusable. <laughs> and and then you go over to Starfield, where this like this is the the, the quest for the, the cool space powers that they sort of hint at in all of the trailers they gave you. Like the huge coverage of this game, and they sort of hint that you might get magic space powers. And this is that cool secret half of the game where the your consciousness is expanding and becoming one with the universe. But in reality, it's the game teaching you never to hope and that magic isn't real <laughs> and that the edge of space is just disappointment. So yes, it is the macrocosm and the microcosm. All is decay and letdown. <laughs> Uh, there we go. I think we've nailed it then. Identical structures on barren planets in first place for uh, b budget dimension of the year. Everyone agreeing? Yep. There's, certain, mm -hmm. there's certainly a mm -hmm. lot of importance placed on it that Forspoken definitely doesn't have. <laughs> yeah. So then, is everyone good with Forspoken's Labyrinth in second place, Legends of the Lore from Goodbye, Volcano High in third place, and Sellers from Diablo 4 and 4th, or Runner Up? Sounds good to me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. Once again, that's identical structures on barren planets from Starfield as budget dimension of the year. Second and third place is Forspoken's Labyrinths and Legends of Lore from Goodbye Volcano High, respectively. And runner-up, Sellers from Diablo 4. <laughs> Brad Fall can't even win budget dimension of the year. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> well, the whole game is, is half done, so it doesn't stand out as much. It's like true. we made a lot of food analogies about filler here. And like <laughs> Redfall was a hot dog on the ground covered in ants. Like <laughs> everybody knew not to eat it. <laughs> Who knows what's inside? I don't care. <laughs> I got through the ants and it was one of those hot dogs with the cheese bits inside and, <laughs> oh, and it's lukewarm. Oh. Right? Like when it's hot, it's, it's fine. But when they congeal in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that brings us to the next category, the sister category to the 7th Gen Game Award. This is, of course, the PS2 Game Award. The nominees are Hi-Fi Rush, Lies of P, Pseudo Regalia, Resident Evil 4 Remake, Spider-Man 2, but only the last two hours, and Wanted Dead. You're going to get three votes each for this category. Uh, let's get some explanations real quick. Uh, Hi-Fi Rush, I think that one's pretty obvious. It's a linear action game. That's it? That's <laughs> Yeah, with, a, with some quirky mechanic. Yeah, it's got some quirky mechanic. Here's Let me explain, because I see it. I absolutely see it. But let me explain why I'm actually not going to vote for this. Oh, yeah? There's a level two in that game is 52 minutes long. And I'm trying to think of a single PS2 action game that doesn't have gacked in it. That would have nearly about to say. an hour-long level. Yeah, and that, that's what the, one of the big problems is Hi-Fi Rush. The levels are too long. They are too long. I actually, I, I definitely felt the, okay, we're doing this platforming thing with the grappling hook and this to the B. And if you had done this one time instead of three times with these platforms in the specific way, I would have enjoyed it thoroughly. Mm -hmm. But instead, I just feel like... You know, just like I did with some parts of Devil May Cry uh, as a series, I didn't come here for the bad platforming, bro. Right? I just didn't. <laughs> They're convinced he did, though. And the, the grapple hook is very specific about how it wants you to be positioned relative to it and look at it with the camera very specifically. Like, it could be on screen and it's like, nah, dog. Nah. <laughs> I'm like, why not? And it's like, nah. And I'm like, oh, if only we taught you to speak. <laughs> that sounds like a very PS2 grapple hook. It does that. Honestly, it makes me think 7th Gen more than PS2. I'm trying to think of PS2 grapple hooks. Ratchet and Clank. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because the grapple yeah, it's, hook it's, definitely it's, became more of a thing in 7th yeah, Gen. But then when yeah, Devil May Cry did it, it worked real well. Yeah, the, the Devil Bringer worked. Right. Uh, then, but then Devil May Cry, Devil, the Devil May Cry, it worked terribly. So it is. There you go. And that is the more 7th Gen Devil May Cry during 7th Gen. <laughs> yes. Um. Yeah, Ratchet and Clank was never this bad, but it was bad. That was definitely a part of our Ratchet month where we go, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lies of P, fill me in. I have not played this game. I didn't even play the demo. Is it also a linear action game? <laughs> it's more linear than most Souls games, so it's pretty. It's fairly linear. But what really, what really got me at being a PS2 game is just it doesn't have all the clutter that modern games have. 
Ooh. Like there's not tons of moving debris. It's it's there's it's not like there's props, but there's many fewer props, it feels. Like it feels like a PS2 game level of props, and there's just a a simplicity to the visuals that is very PS2 to me. Where there's not you can't see anybody's pores. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of enemies are like, I'm a mannequin, so I don't have to be really detailed. That's always a smart choice. So it fe- it feels very PS2-y to me in that way. And also you get robot arms, which just feels like a PS2-y game mechanic. Mm. Okay. I'm seeing where you're coming from. Uh, who put Pseudo Regalia? I assumed you did, because I didn't. Yeah, I also assumed you did. I didn't, so I guess the universe looked at it and went, yep, yep, it goes here. And I'm like, no, that's a 64 <laughs> game. <laughs> Yeah, it's a hey universe. That that doesn't seem right at all. Okay, well, take that universe. <laughs> Does this mean we only get two votes now? <laughs> nah, we'll get three. We don't always do half and then round down because sometimes we have we have five contenders and that's pretty strong. Hey, hey, can anyone explain to me how Resident Evil Four is a six gen video game? <laughs> what a fucking absurd. I mean. The third it person is. shooters didn't feel this good back then, so I get it. I mean, that's true. This feels too sharp to be a PS2 game. Mm-hmm. But it also, Resident Evil 4, which this game is, right. <laughs> is a PS2 game. <laughs> it's not even not on the PS2. It is also on the PS2. <laughs> so I totally get this thing being in here, 100%. Uh, Spider-Man 2, but only the last two hours is pretty funny. Obviously, we're going to talk about this, which means major spoilers for the end of Spider-Man 2. So the flesh trees where you have to do combat for two minutes are ex- an extremely PS2 type of challenge, I feel like. I mean, yes, it feels like I played, I swear, Jack 2 or 3 has a battle that's yes. a lot like that. <laughs> and also just the final boss where it's like, I'm going to lift our school up into the air on the symbiote trees to have a three platform boss fight with, with a poorly conveyed spike mechanic, which also feels very PS2 E to me. It's like, mm. yeah, you, 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 you can't dodge it. You have to leave. Yeah. That also feels like a Jack thing. Like that could have literally <laughs> been in a Jack game as well. So yeah, I totally see you on this. And honestly, I I feel like if more of the game was like the ending, that Mm -hmm. would have been really cool, which is why I was hoping that was what Wolverine was. Right. And we've already seen enough to know, nah. (laughs) And then Wanted Dead, Bob, you're the only human on earth other than Nosebleed who played this game. (laughs) So what is Wanted Dead? So it's a really janky third person shooter mixed with a melee combat game with some really weird like you fight giant robot spider max and that sort of thing okay so it just has a bunch of aesthetics i more expect from that generation where it is like let's take ghost in the shell yeah and then it being a kind of sloppy feeling third person shooter (laughs) uh really feels or uh ps2 ask would you say it feels more ps2 than seventh gen i would say it does okay a little bit because i was gonna say with it devil's is. third that felt like the most seventh gen game alive and this is made by those people right and it definitely feels like a lesser devil's third but even for devil's third i felt like that was a ps2 game that escaped to seventh gen like that's how i felt about it yeah okay all right is there like an energy to the plot or like cutscenes that make it really PS2 or is it too advanced and too weird? They're, they I, are I, really simple. If only Eric were here. Right? I'm trying, like they're so sparse and it, it shows in like, it has tons of mini games you do. Like you, you play <laughs> karaoke. There's two different rhythm games. One involves eating ROM and one involves just taking karaoke. Is this Shenmue? <laughs> yeah. Like it has that sort of like, what is happening? Well, contrary to what some people out there want to believe, the Dreamcast is the same generation as the PS2. Right. So I guess you're making a pretty good argument here. Hmm. You, you have, like, you do a grab game where, you, you know, it's one of those claw a games. game, yeah. Yeah, claw game, game, yeah. Uh, where you collect literal figures of all the characters in the game. It's just their that's 3D Shenmue. model. That's Shenmue. That's, like, I feel like that's just the gotcha ball thing from Shenmue. <laughs> right. But now it's a claw game. 
Bob, this game Shenmue? A little bit, but it doesn't have any of the structure of Shenmue. It still has just, here, play this action game level. It's like 20, 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, that's more PS2, frankly. Shenmue was ahead of its time. Right. Because it's Yakuza. Right, because then you, between missions, go back to your police HQ, which is Shenmue-esque, where you go around by Depsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, Depsy. I love Depsy. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't actually buy it. It's just that they have a vending machine you for it You lied everywhere. to me. How could you do that? You know you're the only human other than Nosebleed on planet Earth <laughs> who played one and dead. You can't just lie about it, Bob. <laughs> you have a really half-baked level up system for upgrading all your moves and unlocking new stuff. So that also felt pretty PS2 game. Hmm. I'm trying to think, like... You know, not every action game during PS2 was like Devil May Cry. Right. A lot of them were just put this currency in to get strong. <laughs> yes, that's true. Hmm. I think we've heard pretty solid arguments for all of these. I think so. Let's go ahead and get voting started. Uh, this time we'll start with Bob. And we get three votes? Yep. Generous, I know. Yeah. I'll have to give mine to One and Dead. Into Hi-Fi Rush. I don't know. I guess I'll give it to Resident Evil 4 Remake. I have that thing of like, it feels too good. But it definitely still has PS2 air to it. You don't have to use all your votes. That's true. I'll only vote for the one dead in Hi-Fi Rush. You know what? Okay. Too generous for Bob. Three votes. Let's go to Aggro next. Aggro? Definitely voting for one dead. I, I, God, just, yeah, watching any amount of that game it was like oh my god like i'm gonna look over and there's gonna be a crt playing a 90s hong kong action movie like it is <laughs> from that era <laughs> um you know I, I i've been staring at this list for a while and i couldn't figure out what was meant by spider-man 2 but only the last two hours but af after the explanation and thinking about it i'm really feeling the vibe i'm i'm yeah, that uh, it's got Spider-Man 2 on the PS2 energy. Yeah. And yeah, Resident Evil 4 remake. Chris. Wanted dead. Spider-Man 2. And I'm not going to use my last vote. <sighs> Spider-Man, but only the last two hours. Because it's nonstop action. Taking you between different sequences. Having bad Western design bosses <laughs> and cool environments for them. There are cool cutscenes that play in between to get you hyped for the really big bad battle. <laughs> and so I feel like it really does earn that. Yeah, I guess even Scream would be like part of that, right? Uh, Scream's a little bit before the last two hours, but I, I, you know what? I'll count. Sure. Scream. Putting Scream in anything is like shooting yourself back to the 90s, much less the <laughs> Yeah, I know. Every time I'm, I'm just like, yeah, this could Scream? Yeah, sure. Put it on the Genesis. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Scream mm -hmm. is in separation anxiety on the Super Nintendo. I don't know if that has a Genesis version. I think yeah, it I think that... And I don't, I don't actually know. That game scares me. <laughs> so hard. Resident Evil 4 Remake does control much better than it did on the PS2. But I'm shocked by how much that game is just the PS2 experience. S sort of stitched together in a way that's almost seamless at all times. Yeah, the only thing that breaks it for me is when they do stuff like, okay, you have the boat now, go explore. Like that, that's Yeah, like having a thing to explore is like beyond ps2 in a way mm -hmm. i totally get that i'm gonna hmm i'm gonna look up some footage of lies of p i'm just gonna lies of p gameplay <laughs> just look at this real quick okay completely flat floor barren room okay now we're outdoors with some decent ornamentation here not a whole waste <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Everyone else voted for one a dead, correct? I think that's right. Mm -hmm. Chris, you also voted for one a dead. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna vote for one a dead over Liza P. I've seen enough of that game to feel like it's closer. Yeah, because Liza P. End of the day is still a Souls game, and it comes and off as very, very bloodborne. Mm -hmm. 
which is just something that just didn't exist back then. Yeah. I get how a version of this game is PS2 core. Mm -hmm. But just watching it, I'm kind of like, it's so Bloodborne and it's so Dark Souls that I can't feel like that's very PS2. Maybe if it was first person perspective (laughs) or use pressure sensitive buttons, I could see (laughs) that'd be very PS2 launch title core from FromSoft. (laughs) As it currently is, this is reminding me a little bit too much of uh, a Souls game. Okay, let me go ahead and get this sorted and get to wave two. Okay, so based on our voting, One and Dead is currently the PS2 gist game of the year. Um, <laughs> I think that's right. I think it should be the ps 2 est game of the year. Um, does anyone else have any contention with that? I feel like compared to these other competitors. Yeah, no. Yeah, I feel like the voting really shows it already. <laughs> yeah, like this is this is the first perfect waterfall we've had. <laughs> Um, Bob, you were the one who voted for Hi-Fi Rush, right? Yeah. Do you want to argue that up? Because that's the only thing I could see moving, per se. No, I, I don't. Wow. I don't feel the need to do it. <laughs> oh, wow. So we're there, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, shit. Okay. Um, that means the PS2 Game Award goes to Wanted Dead, with second and third place being Spider-Man 2, but only the last two hours, and Resident Evil 4 Remake. Runner-up, Hi-Fi Rush. See? Xbox is included in categories. There we go. <laughs> I think they've been in almost every category so far. <laughs> Hopefully they're in the next category. Well, mm, technically the game that is a contender is in is on Xbox. So, you know, next category, Rat of the Year. We have two votes. The nominees are Pizza Tower, parentheses, don't make me choose. That's weak. (laughs) The Pizza Tower rat is named Brick. That's his name. Okay, so it's only Brick. There isn't some other rat you're nominating? No, I did not even write that in there. You did? (laughs) That was in there when the category was first created. It was the only entry for a long time. But I I put some images of Brick in the workshop. (laughs) Yeah, Brick Brick is fantastic. Yeah. Brick is so good. Can't show my hand this early. Anyways, Ashley for Resident Evil 4 Remake. Like, I know she's a mouse, but come on. Yeah, first of all, my, my mice aren't rats. That's a completely different thing. This is ridiculous. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Blythe from Endless Monday, Dreams and Deadlines. Uh, not an actual rat. I don't... Yeah, not not actually a rat, I don't think. Unless there was some ending I didn't unlock. <laughs> Saturday. No. Oh, okay. Uh, she kind. She kind of has the 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 motif. Yeah, she's got rat energy. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she definitely does. And Lerthinder, or Lerthindor? I haven't played it yet. From Baldur's Gate Three. Okay, I need to look this up. Who nominated this? Uh, I did. Tell me about Lerthinder. So, at a certain point in Baldur's Gate Three. I guess mild spoilers for Act Two. You find yourself in a uh, an old deserted temple to the night goddess Shar, and there's a devil inside who is trapped in there until he can kill all of the dark justiciers that were in the temple. But he's been here a long time, and everybody's dead. As you go around the temple, you see these rats who just keep hissing at you, and if you cast speak with animals and talk to one. They all say the same thing. Fuck off. This is my temple. You go away. I'll cut you. <laughs> if if you knock a couple of them around or do a couple different things, it's Baldur's Gate. There's five ways to do anything. You eventually, the rat tells you that he's actually like every rat in here. They're all part of this one guy named Lerthendor, who's <laughs> actually the last justicier. He turned himself into a rat swarm to hide from that devil. <laughs> so now they're just both trapped in here. <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a way I ever expected anyone to get nominated for Rat of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how many rats is he? You ever get a number? Not a clear count. I know you can kill two or three of them and like he's still fine. <laughs> so he's he may many. be an indeterminate number of rats. <laughs> Hmm, I never had to consider whether or not some the category should be called Rats of the Year. 
Huh. Okay. Well, uh, they're, they're your nominees. I'm going to say we get two votes. Uh, I'll go first. I'm going to give it to Brick for Pizza Tower. Brick. 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 Brick is brick, so good. Brick. Brick's the best. Absolutely elevates an already stellar game. Can I get someone to, I mean, like, aside from this stellar character design, sell me on Brick? Okay. So, in Pizza Tower, you normally as, play as Pepino, okay? But... Mm -hmm. You get a sort of like segue to a, 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 like imagine a cartoon title card that's like, hey, this is the episode we're doing now. Like at the beginning of like a classic cartoon or a Ren and Stimpy sort of thing, except for it's now about these two and you're just running around with brick and <laughs> you're having a great time. You're writing him at insane speed. So he's like wiggling really fast as you soar through a level and it just becomes you two being great buds. And just like everything in Pizza Tower, so many great animations. Mm. Does anyone want to add anything else on top of what I've said about Brick? When, when, when you switch to Gustavo and Brick, they show this. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's great. The rat. <laughs> I love how the rat is pink on pink. Yes. You can't fucking read it. Yeah, Brick is incredible. Um... There's a level where you go around a big city. And when you're Pepino at the beginning of this level, he's he can take these cabs and he's in the back sweating and the taxi driver's just taking him around. And it's just, it gives you a sense of the sliminess and the anxiety that comes with the big city. But when you switch to Gustavo, Gustavo and Brick, Brick drives the cab and looks cool as hell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> It is incredible and seamless and genuinely elevates the game that Brick is there. I love Brick. Uh, the other vote goes to Lerthinder because, you know, that is the most rat. <laughs> <laughs> By volume. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's, that's great value there with the Lerthindor. Uh, we're going to move from here to Dr. Agro. Yeah, I'm also going to have to vote for uh, Lerthindor. I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, I never actually talked to him as a dude. I'm not taking shit from rats. Um, <laughs> uh, and yeah, uh, I'm like I'm I'm looking at a giant cartoon rat driving a car. That's compelling shit right there. I'm gonna have to give it to Brick. <laughs> Bob. Yeah, I. This category is rough. Yeah, those two, Brick and Lissendor. <laughs> like those mm. are clearly the, the raddest. <laughs> Chris. Yeah, I have to also give it to Brick and Lerthendor. Oh, this is rough. We're going to have Shit. to figure out which one is more rat than the other. Brick's the only one that's actually a rat. He's a singular rat. Mm. So I think he slightly edges out. It's true. He is one enormous rat and was presumably born as a rat. That's true. But, I mean, what what is more rat-like to randomly have been born a rat or to choose ratness later in life i don't know that we should be giving awards to people wearing rat face <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's true <laughs> god damn <laughs> <laughs> i just i feel like brick might be offended <laughs> I don't know. He's not here for us to ask him, but I can't imagine that that would feel great to lose in a category that the other person rightfully maybe shouldn't even be nominated for. <laughs> I'm just saying we might av avoid a PR crisis if we just give the damn award to Brick. Uh, yeah, I think we'll avoid a lot of things if we just give the award to Brick. <laughs> uh, so how does everyone feel about that? We give Brick first place? Maybe yeah, I'm up for that. The door is like yeah, sounds fair to me. Uh, semantically speaking, it is rat of the year, not rats of the year. Uh, any one of those rats, really not spectacular with Lerthendor. You know, it's only the combination of them. <laughs> that, is, that is very racist against hive minds. I can't believe <laughs> yourself platforming that kind of singular consciousness hate. You know, I'm going to feel comfortable with that exact bias I've been raised with uh, for at least a, a few more decades. I, I feel like I don't need to care about the feelings of hive minds for a little bit longer. <laughs> and then all these podcasts go unlisted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I said a lot of things about hive minds that I regret. <laughs> <laughs> People are supposed to grow and change, so please forget every th terrible thing I did. Thank you and good night. This is basically the plot of future forever war. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that's going to do it. Brick from Pizza Tower is awarded Rat of the Year with second place going to Lurthador. And the other two not actually being rats, it turns yeah, out. Yeah, I was so. like, do, do we do third place? Do no, we- I, I feel like we don't nominate this. <laughs> uh, I'm really glad uh, we didn't allow this mouse bullshit to slip by. Yeah, that would have been I, I, had, I had better mice to nominate. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, this is fucking bullshit. I'm going to bring every rodent in a fucking video game next year. Yeah, maybe we need to expand the genre. (laughs) Oh, my God. Maybe we should do that next year. Maybe it is just rodent of the year. Hmm. So we're excluding rabbits now? Oh, my God. This is a conversation for next year. (laughs) Well, let's move on to our next category. Fakest trailer. The nominees are Babylon X. Concord, Fable, Fair Games, Marathon, and Spine. Uh, can we get the trailers for these posted? Did someone post these? I feel like one of these documents has like hyperlinks, right? Um, I know I did that for the trailer of the year category, but I don't know if I did it for this. I meant to, but I forgot. Okay, let's grab these real quick, because obviously <laughs> I'm going to say nowhere near all four of us have watched these. Whoever wrote in Fair Games, I want to congratulate you on using the dollar sign instead of the S. Of course. Anything else would be ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, one of these is the title of the game, and the other one doesn't make me angry. <laughs> <laughs> There's a deep irony in having Fable on this list when it could have won this award years ago. That trailer wasn't fake. It was just a worthless CG trailer. That's very real. <laughs> <laughs> It's only this year's one that tried to pretend something was happening. I submit that both are meaningless. And that will be relevant for Fair Games and Concord. (laughs) Okay, so I got them all in. uh, So that way people can uh, see this list real quick. For the audience who is interested, we're going to try to put this in the description. So that way you can easily watch all of these trailers. Let's talk about this Babylon X trailer. That's the real dark horse here. Most humans have never seen this trailer. We luckily brought it up during Big Thing, so maybe some saw it. I don't remember the show it was from. (laughs) I think it just showed up on YouTube. Yeah, no, they didn't. It didn't go to any shows. This is just Mm. uploaded it to YouTube of some random day of the week. It just some part of this is like Guy Gaylor got the budget to do a fully 3D game. Yep. It's based on Kevin Sorbo in Hercules. We got this uncanny valley Kevin Sorbo looking dude. And his faces he make are all dead. He's just dead eyed. Now that's that's a whole aspect of this trailer that could be appreciated and ingested on its own. But there's like implications of what the game might be at a couple points. And it's like him running. A lot of him running. Yeah, they show all sorts of weird mechanics things, too. Like, he ducking under lasers. And I think he's even driving a, like, speeder bike at some point. Yeah, I think that's right. Uh, he also has the world map running. And his lady friend has, like, Fetch from uh, Infamous, Second Son. Neon running powers, but it looks <laughs> a bit more magical and less neon. But this game seems to be all about running. <laughs> and I don't know why. Th- this game's never going to happen, right? Not if they don't get another animation done. It seems to be <laughs> running. This is kind of redefining the words pre-pre-alpha. <laughs> but instead of going with that, they go with uh, game footage is not final, which uh, we're, we're seeing it, dude. We know. <laughs> I feel like... The fakeness here is almost grand in how it's presenting itself. It's like, hey, check me out. Uh, This is what games are. They're just running. But a really strong candidate here is also this Concord trailer. Because that, there's nothing here. It's just, what if space? Yeah, it's like a CG, like, um, title trailer. But pretends it's more. At bare minimum, it at least advertises itself of, hey, I'm I'm a teaser, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to give you much. But even what they gave us made me go, aren't you a games as a service? Yeah, a new multiplayer PvP first-person shooter for Firewalk Studios. 
and you know it's extra fake because this game isn't launching like this is one of those games that's gonna be chopped down because it, Sony realized all these games are bad and won't make the money but Bob this says here seven months ago <laughs> when everything was just as good as it is now they promise mm -hmm. that it is coming this new year 2024 all right that's what they say so I don't know. This doesn't seem that fake to me. They didn't even pretend to show a game. <laughs> you know what did, though? Mm. Fable. Fable does one of my least favorite things, this trailer. We got a funny comedian, actor, to come in to show both the high-fidelity graphics and performance capture while making up the fact we don't have a game here. Right. And the fact that it was cut with comedy mm -hmm. almost makes this even worse because now it's a really fake comedy video game trailer which is possibly a circle of hell well don't worry it's really fake gameplay at the end yeah no it's true it's like beanstalk i don't know sword clashing i don't know yeah, i'm sure that's exactly how magic's gonna look in the final game you just gonna throw it at a guy and it'll play a fully realized animation of him burning and falling <laughs> over well, yeah, because it'll be a quick time event, like everything in this ending thing. Like, I have no doubt that will be in the game if the game they're showing here ships at all, mm -hmm. because it's all your AAA set piece hallway QTE sequence. Right. It's boom, 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 boom. And that's insipid, and I hate it, because that's not at all what Fable should have ever been. No. But it's where we are now, and thus, I don't look at this and think that is completely fake to me. I look at this and think, that is going to suck. <laughs> <laughs> I, the best part about this trailer specifically is how at the beginning, at the bottom of the screen, it says in-game footage, which is an evolution of captured in-engine. Because yes. it, it doesn't mean anything. I'm like, we're using our game engine to play this video, and then we captured it. Great. Thank you. That tells me nothing. We got a scripted sequence to play back without dropping a frame, allegedly. <laughs> and we cut a trailer from it even weirder it doesn't even say like running on xbox because they do that sometimes you yeah. know they say running on an xbox captured on an xbox series x this is probably 4090 <laughs> probably i mean xbox is just as much pc as it is xbox now that's a sentence that is true in the year 2024 because we've all gone mad <laughs> then we have fair games now, Concord is a teaser trailer, okay? okay? Yeah. It doesn't give you much, but it has teaser in the title let you know it's not going to do that. Fair Games, dollar sign, Fair Game dollar sign, <laughs> actual name of it, is trying so hard to get you excited about a game. You know, it has all this lore building. It has all these ideas thrown in the completely CG trailer. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of more frustrating. It carries itself as a really big deal. It has a thing you would recognize if written on paper might be a game. Yes. But it is nothing but CGI, and that's infuriating. And they, they do that really infuriating thing of like doing angles to make you think this could be in game. Yes. Like they, they mm, do that yeah. all the time. Like, it's, it's not just CGI to give you the setting and the characters and set a tone. They're, they're showing you actions going, you'll be able to do this in the game. And I'm like, bro, I played a video game. It's not going to be anything like this. Why are you doing this? Which, if anything, that sort of thing reminds me of the PS3. Mm -hmm. Like the 2005 Sony conference with the insanely mm. fake trailers for like, what was it? What was the name of that uh, canceled Ubisoft shooter? Killing Day? I think that's right. Where it's just, doo -doo 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 -doo. and it's like, yeah, I'm just going to perfectly shoot all these things. Yeah, you, you'll be able to switch between the gun in each hand, and it'll look, it'll work right, and it'll look yeah. cool like this. Yeah. And, oh, man. and that, that weird, what was it? Wasn't it Yuji Naka, like, first person shooter that's JoJo's because you control the spectral spirit Phantom to do X? No, it's not Phantom X. You're, max, you're mixing its name with Machin X. Okay. Which makes sense, because that was first person. I know what you're talking about. This is about, crazy that we can't remember. Obviously, we have to rewatch the E3 2005 absolutely. conference ASAP. Uh, it's, that thing's better than any film. 
Oh, God. One might compare it to other films that are propaganda you would watch in a cinema appreciation course. <laughs> Hey, there are many lessons to be learned from Sony E3 2005, and it feels like Fair Games didn't w- learn any of them. Let's talk about Marathon, though. Marathon, very much same deal, right? Mm-hmm. It's not in game. This is not gameplay. This is mostly cool art shit in CG being shown off. We knew more about this game because of the leaks and what they said afterward than we learned from this trailer, even. It's another trailer where all the main character does is run. <laughs> But they're holding a gun, which implies other actions are on the table. <laughs> yes. I genuinely believe this is pretty eligible for Fakus trailer. However, none of these are really contenders compared to some of the things of the past. You know, like our Seven Deadly Sins mobile game. Yes. I think Spine is a very strong contender. Only because uh-huh. it opens and it has this bottom text that says in-game early early gameplay and early in-game and cut scenes footage and then it just is showing the most insane pre-scripted thing possible right it's like no no it's not 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 even for a second (laughs) i'm sure by the end of this trailer though by the end of this spine trailer we will get something that looks like gameplay right because so far this is a cut scene this doesn't even look like a quick time event this is a pre-rendered cut scene Okay, so we have slow walking. That's the gameplay? Okay. Yeah, sure. And it'll just, just look completely immaculate in a way that's insane. <laughs> yeah, that feels disingenuous. It feels fake and disingenuous to be like, yeah, this is gameplay. Yeah. Yeah, it's in here. It's it, This is how it will absolutely look when it comes out. And it will come out. Having discussed all of them, I say we start voting. Three votes. We're going to start with Chris. Spine. <laughs> Babylon X. And Fable. The The other three didn't even pretend that they were real games. Fair Games did a little bit. But Fable felt a lot more like, no, we're just lying. We're lying. Like, you're supposed to think this is actually gameplay. Yeah, and th- that's the thing. Like, by definition, what they showed there will be a highly scripted event. They... That looks nowhere near as good, I imagine. <laughs> like, a lot of the times, that's what you see. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I made it in the game. It doesn't look that good. Like at all, but it's in the game, so they didn't lie. Uh, I'm going to go next. Uh, Spine definitely in Babylon X. Take it. I'm just torn on my third vote here. <sighs> it's really complicated. I feel like something's more insulting about fair games. And what it showed us than Fable even, because Fable's just like, this is, this is, you know, this is in game. This is, this is, you're going to, you're going to hit an A button and it'll play this gutsy. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. Yeah. I guess that's possible. What a great thing you've done with this franchise. But Fair Games has a weird amount of like, this is what the game is. And it's nothing but CG. And it's really weird to be like, here's our grand reveal. It's completely pre-rendered. Yeah, it feels bad to to have done that. And like everyone's played an online shooter. This isn't what those look like. You aren't (laughs) fooling anybody. I bet someone out there believes this. I mean, everyone was 16 at some point, right? Fair. So which one's more repugnant? That or the teaser trailer that literally has nothing to do with what your game is, Concord? (laughs) Because... I don't even know if I'll be in a spaceship. There's a good chance it's on the ground. It's multiplayer. Why am I looking at my sandwich? What is this game? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to give it a fair games though, okay? I'm going to do that. And I'm going to hand it off to Agro. I mean, Spine is an easy first pick. Uh, So is Babylon X. I was inclined to to give one to fair games based solely on the notion that that game is probably getting hatcheted, yeah. uh, making any, any trailer that says it's coming out fake as shit, <laughs> <laughs> but there's, there's just something about that in game footage tag at the beginning of that fable trailer that <laughs> rankles me as being so pathetically and intentionally disingenuous that I'm going to have to give it to fable. Okay. Bob? 
Yeah, same as everyone else. Spy in Babylon X, obviously. <sighs> but it really is down to Fable and Fair Games. <sighs> and that's super hard. Because I, I am... I think I'm more frustrated with Fair Games, whereas I kind of, like, expected this from, from Microsoft with Fable. Yeah, but I'm starting to side with them. Yeah, the, the, like the, the, what, what Fable does is, like what Agra, Agra was saying, of having that one line of text at the bottom. Yeah. And that does make it worse. Because, like, when you say that, when you have that line of text, in reality, what you're communicating to the layman... Mm -hmm. And your average person who's not overly cynical or critical and hasn't watched too many E3 conferences, you're <laughs> communicating, yes, this is definitely what the game is. <laughs> yeah. So I'm starting to come around to their side despite voting for fair games. Mm -hmm. Because I think I'm more insulted by fair games. Right. But I feel more lied to by fable right and i guess that's a, that's the key here it's a fakest and that was that was obviously fake it whereas fair games doesn't pretend to be real it just heavily implies it's real there's something to be said for like will the game contain those sequences mm -hmm. yeah probably maybe will it look that immaculate no will it be something you definably go oh this is gameplay and it's good and so interactive no and most of those sequences are your 7th gen walk and talk, hold forward to go through cool epic scene sort of thing. It's uh -huh. the least interactive thing possible. So really, at the end of the day, what we're praying is that it looks that good and uh, congrats, you technically didn't lie. <laughs> yeah, the thing that like holds fair games back for me is just it's going to be like payday. So we know this trailer is unbelievably fake because it's just showing like cinematic angles of all these characters. It's like you're you're nothing <laughs> yeah i'm pretending that they each have a story to be there almost like a, it has a narration from one person all the way through it and it's like you're not going to be a character well explain the world playing. view they're bringing that is the sound of the ethos <laughs> of the characters of this world that isn't one character that's the spirit that pumps in your blood because you're about to engage in the fair game <laughs> Yeah, and then those guys at the end show up with the NFT monkey masks. Oh my god! So I don't know. I'm really torn on and, this. And, and, it, and here, here's here's why here's why fair games should not win. Okay. It opens with CG trailer. Period. Not actual gameplay. Period. You know when you stress yeah. that In it's huge text. When you stress that, that does make you more honest, right? Mm -hmm. Than the alternative. Than, than Fable saying this is gameplay. Right, I and mean, this isn't the worst trailer category. We have a whole set of them right here. <laughs> we could just make that immediately. <laughs> it, it's kind of like the difference between like a comic book advertisement for sea monkeys, where <laughs> we all know that's not what it is. That's It's kind of charming. And like, oh yeah, no, this is real gold. <laughs> They're both lies, but... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to swap my vote over to Fable. All right. Yeah, then we just need to figure out Spine or Babylon X is number one. Mm. So here's how I view this, okay? It's a complicated swamp mm -hmm. to navigate. Morally speaking, which is more fake? A game that will probably <laughs> never ship, <laughs> whose only gameplay is a dude walking, a dude running, a chick running, and a cutscene of a bike. Yeah. Or the fully scripted bullshit pre-rendered pile of crap that is Spine being like, yeah, that's gameplay. Sp spine is so laughably <laughs> fake. Like, it is... <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a trick because it, it's really trying to convince you this is real. It really is. It's a mix. It said it was a mix of CG and gameplay. <laughs> hey, a uh, quick question. Can you look at any one part of that and visually tell it's not pre-rendered? It's 1% it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that title card you saw for a second, that was rendered. <laughs> I mean, s some of those frames of walking might might have been uh the character was real time. I mean, the I, I don't doubt for a second that those animations on the character walking can be used for a walk and talk sequence. Like the thing about these two trailers for me, I'm I'm not sure which which one should win, but they are very clearly different in that Spine 
that trailer has led me to believe that it was produced by a group of people who have the tools to make a video game. It's not <laughs> that video game, but it is a video game. Babylon X is someone's <laughs> animation project. Yeah. That they are pretending is a video game. I don't know. There's there's one thing in that Babylon X trailer that I think is real. And that is, I think it is roughly 38 seconds in when a grate jitters off a wall to open access. <laughs> <laughs> I could almost believe that's real. <laughs> Why did they put that in? God, I hope that game ships. I, I hope so bad. I want to play it. I want to play it so bad. That is some what in the hell shit. <laughs> yes. The weird world map the game has could also conceivably be real to me. I'm just losing it over, over that. Him just. Are you afraid of me? <laughs> the great yeah, just, just gets power dancing. <laughs> yeah, it's a great like bounces off his face. <laughs> and, and this was really the, cool. Then there's the bit. Uh, <laughs> there's the bit that's 50 seconds in mm -hmm. where he's crouching through a laser grid that also almost looks real. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like real dog shit. What were they thinking? I think that the part where he's running in a hamster wheel, like, that's also real. Like, <laughs> possibly. I don't know how you fail that sequence. Like, what? Do you just fall on your face and eat shit if you don't keep walking? I don't. Yeah, so, so you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go with Spine. Because that. Once again, look at that and tell me which part is pre-rendered and which part is not. There clearly must be a gap in fidelity, right? I don't think that's necessarily true nowadays. I 100% think some mid-tier game could be like, well, we don't, we, we can just use it to do animations we can never, ever get working in game. Yeah, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know. There's a level of this is too good. That has me convinced that, no, you, did, you didn't render this on anything. Even my 4090 is just like, no errant pixels at all, huh? Yeah, yeah I, like I think if I'm going to follow the convictions that have led me here thus far, Babylon X starts with a message that says, gameplay footage not final, and <laughs> Spine serves up some bullshit. <laughs> it does. I'm all behind Spine taking this. Yeah, I, I have to agree. Like, Spine is just clearly not real at all meanwhile babylon x has that cool scene where he rips the crate off the wall <laughs> via his chad race yes. <laughs> like yeah like the babylon x trailer is not real but he's not he's not kidding us that it is <laughs> he, he also doesn't know he thinks that's real. <laughs> yeah I, I think part of the babylon x thing that made it really insane is the press release of Elm alongside it saying it was a brand new rpg that was going to be in, in, huge and have all these choices you could make yeah, um, that, that made me win fakest PR, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. But the trailer doesn't write those checks. Right. So it doesn't need to cash them. <laughs> so, okay, so what we're looking at is Spine as fakest trailer of 2023, Babylon X as second fakest trailer, and Fable as third. Sounds right to me. I can mm -hmm. settle yeah, for that. That sounds right. I can settle for that. Fair Games definitely upsets me with its two-minute-long ass mm -hmm. that is completely yeah. pre-rendered and showing things that might be like gameplay, but it does have that disclaimer at the front. Whereas Fable shows a bunch of sequences they might be able to script together in a lot of cutscenes. And it's like, yeah, that's a game. That's a video game. <laughs> that's what video games are, right, guys? And I'm like, oh boy, that is a cynical fucking statement. <laughs> <laughs> Comes out, and I don't know. Never. <laughs> Man... Now I'm thinking about Perfect Dark. Oh, boy. Anyway, fakest trailer for 2023 goes to Spine. With second place going to Babylon X, third place going to Fable, and runner-up Fair Game Dollar Sign. All one thing. No, don't put any spaces in that. Well, it's time to move on to our next category. Biggest disappointment. Let me tell you. If you like these games, you're going to be flabbergasted by the things we're going to say. That's okay. No one liked the new Forza Motorsport. <laughs> <laughs> the nominees are Diablo 4, Final Fantasy 16, Forza Motorsport, Gravity Circuit, 
Paradiso Guardian. I forgot I put this in there, but it's true. Starfield, Vengeful Guardian Moonrider, The Wonderful One, and Wanted Dead. Bob. What's up? I'm sorry. I know you yeah, put I'm Wanted sorry, Dead Bob. in there. Like, no one else played it. Yeah. No, it sucks. Uh, let me go ahead and start with uh, me explaining why Diablo 4 was a little bit of a disappointment for me. And then, Bob, you also played it. So, of course, you can sure pile on your own personal perspective. I expected the areas after playing the demo, even, you know, in that open beta early on. I expected the different areas to have a little bit more of a tonal shift to the story and feel like there was a bigger thing that was changing. Yeah, is we played through this. <laughs> I was surprised to find out from, I believe, you or your brother. Oh, yeah, we both simultaneously were just like, Bob, we're in Act 4. Yeah, I was or like... whatever. Like, we I, were so many acts in, and you, you thought we were still, like, in 2. Yeah, I thought that... I th was not sure Act 1 had ended. <laughs> because I thought... Uh-huh. When they released the beta, they have this, this giant map, and they're like, well, we locked off a few things because that that's just not going to be in this, but you get to play everything that's act one. So in my mind, every new act would be a brand new huge map. Which I didn't expect that, but I did expect, because in older Diablo games, you would finish an act and it would be like, check out the new area. It's a big, very different thing. And you can feel gashunk gashunk it has begun and ended. But Diablo 4's open world seamless nature made that disappear entirely. Now, it's entirely possible the final act of the game does that. Mm -hmm. I didn't beat the game, but 80% of the game does not do that. Right. And like if the final act does it, that is not enough. No, it, it, it does disappoint in that manner. Also, um, there's a lot of things about the game that were in the moment very disappointing to me um you know i talked about a lot of them on big think dimension um, yeah how the game levels with you yeah it feels so we played through super mario rpg remake on a recent stream now super mario rpg is not a difficult game and the remake in many ways makes it easier however one of my most enjoyable moments of that stream is putting in the time and the work to grind to an insane level and just completely floor the enemies and since the entire world of Diablo 4 scales with you, and so do your friends, uh huh. so you can have a friend who's like 10 levels below you, and they're basically as effective as you. Yep. That feels awful. I'm literally on a hamster wheel. Yeah, there's, you don't feel any sort of sense of progression of power. It's just, you're always the same. So since you're reliant upon the equipment to feel like you're stronger, you inherently aren't stronger. That's been Blizzard's problem for so long. This is the worst it's ever been in my experience. Right. Like, I associate Blizzard with, like, no, you get really powerful as you level up. Because I've mostly played WoW, where it's like your new abilities made you much stronger. And I guess that ended in more recent expansions. But in the beginning, you got so much more powerful every time you got anything new. Yeah, that's a lot how Diablo 2 was. Like, you... If you kept powering up, you would just annihilate stuff. Yeah, it felt really good to go down skill trees, make some decisions, and get some really cool stuff going on. But here, not only... Like, I, in, in some ways, I like this more than Diablo 3. It definitely upset me less than Diablo 3. Some of the narrative stuff they do early on is really cool in this. Mm -hmm. But the experience of playing it didn't give me any of the cool vibes I enjoy about playing any sort of RPG, hack and slash, or otherwise. And so because of that and this weird seamless open world goulash that was the game where you just don't get to, like, it's all just a soup. It, it just, it kind of just felt like, it felt like Destiny Endgame sort of stuff where you're just grinding and there's a story going, but you don't care because it's kind of just faded into the background. <laughs> there are some neat things there. There are some dumb things there in the story and the side missions, the little quests. But ultimately, it felt like it didn't matter. I was disappointed. Any specific points you wanted to throw out on top of that? No, we really kind of hit everything. That, okay. Like, that's enough. Um, I feel like everyone's going to have something to say about this one. And anyone who's listened to our podcast knows that by now for certain. <laughs> <laughs> Final Fantasy 16. Uh, I guess I'll get my complaints out of the way. Now, keep in mind, we're going to 
spoil it because, of course, our um, disappointments will inevitably bring up the story to some extent, I'm sure. And right out of the gate, I'm definitely going to do that for something that is like 10 to 20 hours in. I can't remember the exact hour mark, though. Sid is the best part of that game, and he's just fucking gone. And I know as a writing device, that should be like, so you feel how hurt Clive must be by this. And I'm like, no, I feel like really disappointed because no one else is stepping up to take his presence in the story and his charisma in the group. Mm -hmm. So many people are at the home base. They have no time to shine. It feels like people are barely motivated in their own interesting ways. And my strongest disappointment in this regard is Jill. Where we set up the island, we set up a horrible story for her to have. We pull back at the last second in the U.S. dub. And I can't remember if we brought that up. Like, I feel like I brought that up on Big Think, but I can't remember if we did in the Force Feedback video. Yeah, I don't remember. Where it just seemed weird because they clearly implied some heinous things they were doing on that island. And then they immediately pulled back. And apparently when they finished the dub for Japan... They fully deliver on the horrific nature of that, mm -hmm. which feels like you absolutely just made chill boneless. I don't need grim, dark things in my story, but if that's what your story is, you can't pull back. It has to be that for that moment. You can't imply it and then just go, yeah, I don't know why you thought that. That's weird. No, they're just uh, human sacrifices and nothing else. And I feel like that kind of is indicative of everything in that game where it presents itself and even the first hour or so are grim dark. Uh, yeah, it's true. Yeah. And then it just starts being afraid to show even like dismemberment or too much gore. You'll have things where it's like, yeah, she's dead, but she's looks perfectly fine. Like they just splattered blood on her per, per, completely pristine body. <laughs> Yeah, and there's there's a lot in the opening chapters that really does just not match up with the rest, where it jackknifes, like, you know, content warning. Uh, you know, she's, uh, oh, I forgot her name. The one who uses the wind uh, powers that you steal Benedicta. from her. Thank you, Benedicta. I'm terrible with names. Anyways, Benedicta is out in that forest after you fight her for 10 seconds, and it's like, and then rapists appear. And it's like, excuse me, what? <laughs> 10 seconds yeah that's what it took and then you know she just goes hulk mode and that's it mm, there's a lot of different things with that game right that absolutely deserved more development i ancient civilization stuff that is explored more in dlc apparently <laughs> Joshua and Clive having more time to talk to each other and develop Jill getting more period there's so much more that this game could have been through full development, but it feels like it's all really half-baked. And on top of that, there's a bunch of really, really large open worldish areas that don't have compelling content in them and feels like an MMO, where it's like, go pick up piles of dirt, go pick up piles of dirt next to a river that are minerals. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of stuff like that. So uh, this, I genuinely thought for me, heading into this game, I was going to enjoy this game and I don't have to deal with a number of people who want a more closer to traditional Final Fantasy. Stop writing comment. I know you're like, oh, Final Fantasy is about constantly change. Shut the fuck up. That's not, this isn't about you. Listen, I was expecting to enjoy this game and people I knew who liked many other Final Fantasies would not because it is an action game. And instead, what happened is even I was just flabbergasted and disappointed at so many different aspects of this game. Yeah, I didn't even let myself get really hyped for this because I knew I saw what it was. We saw a trailer. We saw it was going for this darker style. We knew it was going to be an action game. And all those things kind of were red flags to me for things I just didn't care that much to see in a Final Fantasy. Mm -hmm. oh, and then we played the demo. I was like, okay, I get what they're going for. Yeah, I feel like the demo accomplishes that. But it didn't deliver on any of that. Like the, there aren't actually well-developed politics between these different countries. No, that system is insane no. because Alan Wake has more threads to follow. And it's a story about a small town with few <laughs> actors in the story. Right? Right. It deserves the system. It has much more than this political system. That's in this to follow a thing that is not that complicated. Like every country just has Chattel slavery in the exact same way. Like, again, I, I am loath to say this, but Dragon Age did this better. <laughs> <laughs> 
at least in Dragon Age, the different countries treat the the prejud the marginalized mage class differently. Mm -hmm. Like this country gives them a little bit more freedom. This country is really hard on them. This country treats them as abominations and keeps them in chains. In this one, they said, fuck you, we're taking over and created their own country that didn't do war crimes. To some extent, it felt like this game was going to do that. You know, it like felt like <laughs> that sure is this game. Uh, yes. <laughs> instead, instead, there is five nations at the start of the game. One is deleted off screen in a time skip and we never know anything about it. One is the is the sexual assault, assaulting children island that is dealt with in like a in like a two a two hour segment, which is fucking nuts. Then there's the Odin country, which is already dead at the start of the game. There's no humans there. So it it's effectively null. Definition of disappointment. Yeah. So the only real, the only actual two powers are the the desert merchant country and generic fantasy medieval. We have knights, guys. Mm -hmm. The the fusion between Game of Thrones core and Final Fantasy. That is our main kingdom here. Yeah. Yeah. It's that and Kupka's kingdom, and those two. <sighs> If there was more going on with the other countries. <laughs> Complex motivations. <laughs> you can't just be motivated by the get bad guy wanting you to be motivated to do a thing. Mm -hmm. And that is so many motivations in this. Yeah. No, that's it's pretty rough. And then as an like they tried really hard to sell this as an action game too. Like they were like, we got this guy from Double May Cry. It has people working on us from all over the industry, like Platinum Games and uh, Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, that's true. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, we we called in the we called in the game developer Avengers to make an action game that isn't as good as Kingdom Hearts Three. Yeah, like the, it's just incredibly simple action combat, like the most basic. You have one combo and one weapon, and enemies either die instantly because they're irrelevant, or don't respond to your attacks at all because there's a stagger bar system. Mm -hmm. You know, Agro said it best in the um in the force feedback we did, where it's like he would pay attention to enemies. And what type they were until he realized, like, it doesn't matter. I deal with every enemy in the entire game the same. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's true. And I, I think it's absolutely fair to just be like, Kingdom Hearts 3 is right over here and is a much, like, I'm by no means a Kingdom Hearts stan. No. But it is super obvious in the num numerous ways that is a more complex action RPG with more variety of things you're doing than this. And that's a bummer. Yeah, because once again, it could have just been an action game with a ton of money poured into the story and a gritty, dark story to tell with these sort of Game of Thrones influences and other stuff. And I would have been interested in that. That would have been really cool. It's so insane. It's like, yeah, we, we, they, kept, they kept mentioning Game of Thrones. And then the thing it's actually the most takes from the most is, is fucking Attack on Titan. Which is kind of funny because they do I, become the big people. They do. They... <laughs> They do, but like Clive <laughs> even has the exact same arc as Aaron for where for like a huge chunk of he's like, I'm going to try and turn into Ephraim. Oh, I can't, which is exactly what happens in Attack on Titan for like 30 episodes of Aaron going, I'm going to turn into the Titan and then can't. Well, they did warn me. Crunchyroll said Attack on Titan is the Game of Thrones of Japan. So he didn't say that. He totally said that. <laughs> he said it was the Walking Dead of Japan. Oh, whatever. It's the same thing. <laughs> Yeah, I've said everything I'm going to say. I'm just going to get it out of the way for the rest of this. Everyone else, feel free to... I, I don't really have anything more to add to it other than Attack on Titan sure has a lot more mystery boxes that pay off. If it was just the combat in Final Fantasy 16 that I didn't like, that would be whatever. Uh-huh. But the things I like about Final Fantasy are like, I like big, cool world. You know, Midgar and Junin and Nibelheim and the Golden Saucer in Final Fantasy 7. In Final Fantasy VIII, you have the Gardens, you have uh, Galbadia City, you have Dolette, you have a lot of cool locations. In Final Fantasy IX, you have Lindblom, the big steampunk city with all the airships. In Final Fantasy X, you have Dream Xanarkand and, all, and Luca and Guado Salam and all these other great places. There's not a... In this, you don't have shit. And I get it. I get that these big cities... Would be insanely expensive to produce in high fidelity, in high high full spin the camera fidelity when you're when no real gameplay is happening there. Maybe that's an indication that you shouldn't make the games this way. Maybe.
Yeah, I think yeah. maybe it's an indication that making a game at the highest possible level of fidelity has some casualties that are deeply relevant to the RPG genre. And again, like Final F I love like Final Fantasy Cast, that's an enormous part of it. Even Final Fantasy 13, which I played after this year for the first time after 16. And that game is unbelievably not there done. Mhm. Mm like it, its story even feels like it was slashed to pieces to be not done. It still has better defined characters with more memorable moments than anybody in 16 other than Clive. Like it's so ludicrous that it's like Clive is like, here's my friendship power. It, this is your Final Fantasy. Big punch <laughs> with friendship. And it's like, you didn't, those other characters didn't fucking matter to your journey at all, except you sucked the fucking <laughs> summon power out of them. Yeah, you literally is vampire around getting all these powers. <laughs> That's just, it. I'm just sitting there with the bucket of KFC chicken and be like, we're in this together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so strong now. He even, he even pretends that he has some sort of relationship with Koopka and with Benedicta. It's like, no, they were just your enemies. I mean, I get it from the angle of they were also manipulated by this thing, except they really weren't. They were kind of just assholes. Like, I get it from the you created this doomed status quo angle, but and it's like, there's so many things. Like you have party members, but there's no, you couldn't, you couldn't make a thing where I hit a button when an enemy's low on health and you do a cross tech with Jill or Sid or anybody. The bouncer you is can, way too high tech. It for, is one, obviously the games have been downhill since the bouncer. Everyone knows it. No one will say it, but the dog can juggle. <laughs> yeah, that's it. But you, you couldn't give me a combo finisher with the dog or Jill or Sid like Kingdom Hearts three has that. It seems like from it seems like from footage that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will have that. No, they explicitly said it would have it. They explicitly said it, and not just with Cloud. Every they literally said we wanted to show the relations between these characters through the combat, so we gave them team up attacks. Hey, where the fuck was that idea for Final Fantasy XVI? It has been so crazy going through this year, listening to people who are very enthusiastic about AAA Square Enix games get upset when any of these things are pointed out when it's like you have other examples recently from square that are triple eight like kingdom hearts three and final fantasy seven remake the first remake one. yes and you saw the trailer for rebirth all of these things are in these there are mini games <laughs> there are cities plural that are very developed mm -hmm. where there are characters in them and again, like, I get it. There's a reason Final Fantasy VII Remake is three games. Because if it was one game, it would cost $750 million. <laughs> so, Sony in three years. But <laughs> <laughs> The Wolverine's great. It's really too bad that they went under after finishing Wolverine. <laughs> you didn't, like, I... I would have ra I would have rather had, like, one less big set PC kaiju fight and had, like, a cool town. Yeah. Or, or cross or, or team up attacks mm -hmm. or any of the side characters having any development whatsoever. No, more incredibly boring kaiju moments. Honestly, like, I really love Final Fantasy XIV's music. I have no idea where they why they just told them, don't make any good music for this game. Make 18 variants of the prelude theme. Yeah, that's insane. That, <laughs> that is insane. Ain't no Final Fantasy need that many variants. <laughs> Honestly, I kind of loved that by the end of the game. I was like, oh shit, is that a new one? Let's fucking go. <laughs> like, I thought the Titan song was good. Why couldn't that energy be on all of them? Like, I expected all of the fights to have like a cool different genre song for one phase, but then it's just all the orchestra for every other fucking fight. Yeah, my favorite song is um, one of the hideaway songs, and they just take it away at the end of the game to replace it with a worse hideaway song. And I'm like, come on. Even the kaiju fights, like after Titan, they just all become Bayonetta 2's boss fight, final boss. Like they just become you're doing Bayonetta cartwheel dodges on the space platform. And once you get their health down enough, you see a bit, you get a QTE cutscene of doing a big, doing a big punch on them. Yeah, I. I think at very least, time will show that this and Forspoken are much closer in what they accomplish than any of the other AAA Square Enix experiences over the years. Like, 
Kingdom Hearts 4, probably not going to have the problems this game had. That seems completely impossible. <laughs> yeah, not a chance. Nomura cares too much about his characters. This is a weird outstanding because it, like, Forspoken doesn't have the name Final Fantasy on it. Right. This does. So it feels weird when it has problems to the scale that Forspoken does. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to be ridiculous and say Final Fantasy 15 is better. I think in some ways it is better. But on a macro level, not really. I don't think that's ridiculous at all, honestly. 15 has characters in cities. It, it, has, it has one city. It has two cities. One's really small, though. What if you show footage of the city being blown up from the movie King's Glade? <laughs> <laughs> but that had the excuse of we made it in three years to get anything out. Mm -hmm. This had seven years of development. It's like, if this, if this can't put up, what hope is there? Is it just Yoshi P being a really... Was he not able to turn off the like hyper-budget mode that let him turn 14 around? Was he like, well, I okay, I'm making a AAA game, but I'm going to be exactly as Spartan with it as I was with turning around that MMO? Because that feels kind of like what it was. Yeah. Like, it's insane to be that everything feels so cheap, and then you get to shit like the Titans fight where that was $20 million. Easily, yeah. <laughs> that, that, that fight took a year of development to get working. I don't care how good the burger is if I have to eat 10 pounds of sand to get to it. So I think it's safe to say we've listed many, many reasons. Does yes. anyone feel excluded because something wasn't mentioned? No. Can we move on? No, I'm done. No. Like, you you could talk about Final Fantasy 16 being bad forever. It, it is a complex and weird failure. Mm -hmm. One might even say... <laughs> you could talk about Final Fantasy 16 being a disappointing game for 91 and a half minutes <laughs> and still feel like you didn't say nearly enough. <laughs> Please check the description for a link to people talking about Final Fantasy 16 for that length of time. Feel free and just know I get no joy out of being disappointed in this game. I get absolutely none. Yeah, I like games. I especially like RPGs. Like I'll stand for the most weird jank ass fucking things but this this wasn't weird and jank it was relentlessly and callously optimized down into nothing yep i came in expecting something that was gonna land on my top 10 and it definitely didn't get close <laughs> no part of 16 is good enough to cover for any of the other parts that are also not good enough to be good oh you just didn't like it because no i didn't like 16 because it's a bad game so we can move on and we can just even get this out of the way now. So that's that's winning. There's literally no chance anything else was a bigger disappointment for us. Yeah, that seems pretty hard to overcome. Probably. So I'm just gonna just gonna pop that up there. Uh the next entry, Forza Motorsport. Let me tell you about my man Chris Isaka. Chris, gameplay designer on a, a small game, Kill Switch. Is, you know, director of Kill Switch moves on to be the gameplay designer of Gears of War. Man's a revolutionary. Forza is getting rebooted. A little scary at time. They put him front and center. He's the director of Forza Motorsport. I'm like, okay, cool. They start talking about the ideas of it. Like, oh, it's like even more of a car PG. You're going to have these car levels and then you have driver level and you do this to level yourself up and level that up. And nah, nah, nah. There are all these systems to stagger on difficulty. And somehow still makes no impact. Game has no music. Game has no riz. That was... The, the no music thing is fucking mental. What the fuck do you mean you didn't put in music, Microsoft? What the fuck is your deal? So here's what I think. I think they looked at the PC space where some of those, which are much lower driving simulators, obviously. Right. Lower budget. Yeah, of course don't have soundtracks some of them and they went well that's good enough and it's like no over here gran turismo just came out bro you can look over there at your direct competitor i genuinely i gave gran turismo 7 a 10 that was an amazing game for that year that is still an amazing game mm -hmm. it has so many features not only because of the game and the hardware what it's capable of but also the controller itself it's such a 
fundamentally watershed moment for driving simulators that I do not know how they do any better. Just go make another tourist trophy. (laughs) Don't even worry about Gran Turismo for a while, bro. And I didn't expect Forza Motorsport to be a 10, right? I didn't come in expecting a 10. I came in expecting a 9, and it's nowhere near that. I feel like, for me, the beginning of that game is so cut and dry. And to me, the aesthetic of Forza has never, like, fully gelled with me in a way that the aesthetic of Gran Turismo 7 did. Mm -hmm. This almost like regressed even beyond that point where it feels like there is no joy in the opening of this game. The loop isn't fun. The game forces you to use the auto upgrade system for the car right out of the gate. It will not let you tune your car at all. It's like, hit this button. I'm like, okay, there I hit it. Can I tune it now? And it's like, no, the next step, start the race. (laughs) I'm like, guys, I'm here to tune my car. I'm here to get a currency To tune my car, have an experience that's... They're like, no, do the whole race. Okay. Now we're going to teach you this other thing and yet again take control out of your hands. But I guess you could go tune your car, maybe. And it's just so many layers of this, experiencing it. Microsoft not putting their full back into it. It feels like this is the most not fully done thing since possibly Halo Infinite. It's also the first game they've released since Halo Infinite, right? Uh, technically, I think Forza Horizon came out afterward. In Forza Horizon, you no, may have complained. No, that was like December, I think. I, they're I pretty think close. I think that Horizon came out near the launch, and then Halo came out a no. whole year later. No, Forza Horizon 5 is not a launch game. You're thinking about the next-gen version of Forza Horizon 5. That was November 2021, so they're really close. Halo Infinite came out two weeks after Forza. Oh my god. Right, yeah, it's neck and neck. Jeez. Yeah, no, they didn't have a 2022 game, remember? Right, except Pentiment. Right, and that's what I was going to say. I was going to say everyone kept saying Pentiment's a great game, and I'm like, I'm sure, but that's not a substitute for a lineup. Right, that's not a AAA game you expect from a major publisher. Which, honestly, why didn't we nominate Xbox for biggest disappointment? I feel like, because Redfall, Starfield, (laughs) Forza. Oh, it's oh, been a bad year for it, Xbox. Oh, man. Yeah, if we put them all under one net, they might just win. <laughs> yeah, that might actually... Mm, I don't know. I, I, don't, I wouldn't vote for that over Final Fantasy sixteen. But yeah, I was really disappointed by Forza Motorsport. I got really worried towards the end, but I thought this could still be it, but it, it really didn't do it for me. So, so we're going to move on. Hey, Bob. Hey. I don't know which of us is more disappointed in Gravity Circuit. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah, I wasn't especially disappointed in that. I thought it was perfectly acceptable. Uh, Bob, would you like to express your experiences playing Gravity Circuit? Uh, Gravity Circuit's a game that made me think that it was going to be a Mega Man X-style, like, fun action platformer. Okay. And then it had, like, no interesting ideas for levels, and the grapple hook mechanic just felt bad. And... You just equip the double jump and walk out through every level. And, <laughs> yeah, and that is that is how it goes. <laughs> and every enemy just takes a lot, a lot of punching, which isn't very fun. You just hit them repeatedly, and they don't really fight back. Yeah. And then the only thing in the whole game that challenged me was the final boss, the only part of the game I enjoyed, and that even made me watch a cutscene before I could re- redo it. So that wasn't good either. Yeah, that that having to watch a cutscene before you did it was a really bad decision. No, you should literally never do that ever. Yeah, and I think I had to take a swing at that final boss something like eight, ten times because I didn't equip the double jump the entire game. Fair. Until then. Uh huh. Because it made that boss that much easier. Um. Yeah, I found its uh gear system engaging. Uh, uh, frustrating to engage with just the cost of you getting certain upgrades because you can you know make your hitbox on your punches bigger you could get a double jumper you could do these other things and it's like guys you made a game that is so frustrating I need at least half of these things to get it serviceable but then that makes your entire game's level design boneless Mm -hmm. that's awful Uh, when it comes to the ideas for levels I think there are only like two good ideas for a level and one of them is only like half well executed one of them, the first level I booted up with the sound level, I was just upset. The, the whole level is about sound and nothing syncs to the music. Like none of the mechanics of, oh, these these platforms are shaking and do like a a, a waveform sort of look to bounce up. Uh huh. And none of that ever syncs to the music. Yeah. It's like, why'd you make this level? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
And it's not like the the music doesn't sound pounding. Mm -hmm. Like, it does sound pounding, so it it really should. Right. Like, there should have been an idea there that really keyed into that. Mm -hmm. Uh, But that's the thing. A lot of these levels feel like they don't have much of a cogent, functional idea for what to do. And those that do, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. So I I was pretty disappointed by uh, Gravity Circuit. I, uh, I felt like I actually kept myself pretty calm about it on content because... I don't think the devs are bad for what they did, but I think their art fucking sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, and so like, I don't want to sit, I don't want to go out there and swing at the devs with just pointing out brutally and savagely how much it just falls short of the task. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the same I felt about Bat Boy, but I was less angry about Bat Boy. <laughs> Bat Boy will disappear into the, into the, the memory will just fade over time because it's so similar to Shovel Knight. Right. Whereas this was aggravating and disappointing in sharp ways. Uh, we can move on now. Uh, Paradiso Guardian. For people who don't know, it's uh, Gay Sex Castlevania. The gay sex is literal. So, Dan, why, why, why are you disappointed in the gay agenda? So, let me tell you how the gays have disappointed me, Dr. Agro. They don't scroll smooth. <laughs> Mm, this game, yeah, that, that's real fucked up. This game has beautiful art design, and I don't just mean I'm playing as a twink, which you do. You play as what is basically Roxas from Kingdom Hearts as an angel twink. Damn, you have gay sex with basically every boss. It is very graphic. You can turn that off. You know, it defaults to naughty angel mode on. You can just be like naughty angel mode off and. Uh, suddenly, all of a sudden, you don't uh, segue your conversation about this boss, you know, being here and because he's your good bud from back in the day. Suddenly, you don't segue from that into sucking him off. You just you just go, OK, well, I'm going to go now. And he's like, well, I'm going to stay here and be your summon. So this game has gorgeous art designs. It's got some neat mechanic ideas, too. Like it's, uh, you know, as I said, Symphony of the Night. But it now has like witch time and it has some interesting ideas of what to do around that. And it's really fun. But the whole thing scrolls incorrectly because of that core Unity engine problem. And it's made by a foreign developer. So I will never be able to communicate to them what is wrong with this game. And even if I could, we've seen countless times before, probably won't fix it. Yeah. Heartbreaking. I refunded the game. Uh, The game's really cool. Outside of that, it had awesome monster designs. And it was really fun. And... It has no right looking as good as it does for gay sex Castlevania. Uh, hey, who was disappointed in Starfield? Fucking no one. <laughs> I was. But you were disappointed. I, I really, really was. Agro, will you will you quickly talk this man down so that way he sits down and stops being loud and upset about this game you undoubtedly found no flaws with? Hmm. <laughs> For all the shit I give Bethesda, I like Bethesda games. I like Skyrim. I like Oblivion. I even I like Fallout 3 even. I don't really like Fallout 4 that much, but it was it seemed like they were walking back the things I hated the most about it for this game, like the main character being voiced. And then it's like, uh yeah, here's the infinite space. Um it's a bunch of small areas that you fast travel between. There is literally no reason to explore anything ever. Like, how do you fuck up that bad? That's the one thing your company does. <laughs> yeah, even as someone who's never successfully been able to stick with the Bethesda RPG, I understood the appeal, and it appealed to me too. But I would just fall off. This, I played it, and it just didn't seem to have the appeal. The sense of exploration's dead, because it's all fast travel. When you leave mm-hmm. the planet even, your ship always points back at the planet. Which I kept going, man, that's weird. Why is that? Obviously, you wouldn't reverse into space. That doesn't make fucking sense. And then someone pointed out, like, the theory's going, well, yeah, uh, that they only have one way to load in you being in orbit. So if you travel to it, you're looking at the planet. If you travel into the atmosphere from it, you're looking at the planet. And something like that does enough to really shatter the already tenuous notion that this is exploration. Yeah, as much as I dislike Bethesda games, I did put like eight or ten hours into Skyrim, and I played a decent chunk of Oblivion well. Yeah. And there was, I could see 
what people like in those. And I also enjoyed that for a bit. Mm -hmm. But this had none of that. Like literally not even a little bit of the, the stuff that I wanted from Skyrim that I enjoyed in Skyrim. Like I, I get why people were disappointed in this game for not having that Elder Scrolls magic. E even apart from that, because I'm like, okay, we're not going to go exploring around. It's very segmented because it's space travel that, that fits in with the theme. Mm -hmm. And honestly, some of the, like when you go to the two or three big areas with all the quests in them, I really liked a lot of those quests, but the game's overall structure is fucked. Like the, the production of this game is some kind of weird nightmare of just picking up huge chunks of resources and putting them in all the wrong places. They're like, well, yeah, uh, we have a thousand planets and there's nothing on them because that's how space be like, bro, you made a video game. That's the, the point wasn't to, to be like, ne was Neil deGrasse Tyson sitting in the room telling you you're not allowed to have fun. Right. Like, yeah, the real world, we also can't travel between planets in seconds. Your point? <laughs> and, and even like so many of the systems seem half implemented or broken or like they, there was supposed to be some other mechanic that went with them, but now it's not there. Like I can't fast travel from this planet to that planet because my engine isn't upgraded enough, but I can go to a, a middle planet in between them and then fast travel to that planet with no problem because fuel's not real. Um, my spacesuits have stats for environmental protection that don't matter ever. Uh, Wait, what? What the fuck do you mean they don't matter? What? I, I never had it come up. Like I go to a <sighs> planet and they're like, you're fucked. And I'm like, am I? Because nothing's happening to me. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Great. No, yeah, this game is just like, it, it's just cracked open and half done everywhere. And it was, God, I fucking, I loved the, the conceit of it, the aesthetic, the, the, you're a part of this weird, rich people, scientist club who go out exploring the universe and, and that guy's a cowboy and then that's the rich guy. And this is our assassin. And I'm like, yeah, let's fucking go. There's no story in the back half of this game. <laughs> There's just not you like you get the, the mystery aliens and they're like, oh, man, I bet you want to know where all of the floaty space junk you're collecting is pointing to. <laughs> it's going to be wild when you find out at a certain point playing this game. I had to Google what the fuck is this thing? Because I feel like at a certain point, the NPC started acting like they had told me. <laughs> <laughs> And it turns out they did. It was just not impressive or satisfying or interesting. Oh. The whole conceit of the game is that if you collect all the artifacts, it points you to the thing that lets you respawn in an alternate universe. Which does... You play the game again. Oh, my, oh my oh, God. To the end oh. of... Oh like, you remember God. how you go to, go to those planets and go to all the temples and to, to do the zero-G puzzle thing to upgrade your dragon shouts? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, you run out of those planets, so you go to a new universe, so you can become more powerful, so you can go to a new universe and upgrade all of your shouts, so you can go to a new universe to upgrade all of your shouts. What a stupid game. I... I, I, there's like no story along with this is there well I mean there's a bunch of other people hopping around universes and like one faction is is led by a, a surprise NPC and they're like we need to work together to, to make sure that only people we deem are morally correct should get to do it and the other surprise NPC from the other faction because they're like oh my god who are these people are they the starborn are they aliens are they from the future what are they they're just they're just people who opt dimensions with this bullshit the other one's like haha I'm going to go to the universe to gain more power and you should be amoral you should you have to pick between the raspy voiced one dressed in black saying you're out for yourself and the one who's dressed in white saying no only the morally pure can do it this is this is great writing we made a great sci-fi game this is this it's fucking garbage starfield's plot is fucking garbage and it just disappears in the back half of the game and you i i hate it i hate it so much <laughs> and you all thought jumper was bad <laughs> oh 
you're just wishing Sam Jackson was chasing you for being a starboard. For the entirety of this plot, while it still exists, they 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 keep insisting that there's there's some spiritual dimension to this question of of whether or not humans even should mess with something that and none of the people talking about it have any idea what the fuck it does Be, because we just we have to pretend that that's still a thing the farthest we go in the future there always has to be one jackass in the room going but i took a religion class in college and i think that that makes me an important part of this conversation do you have anything to add to this conversation uh no <laughs> okay <laughs> Uh, I feel like Agro's bottled this up for a little while now. It's, it's since we're sweating. in full spoiler mode, let me yeah. just go ahead and... Okay. Yeah. You know how I said one of the factions was led by a surprise NPC? Yeah, sure. Halfway through the game, there is an event where you have to make a choice. Uh, oh. And yeah, either you have to lose all of your bullshit or... Uh, actually, I don't even know if it matters whether you do this or not. <laughs> the game kills an NPC. Okay. okay. And it is invariably the one that has the highest uh, like rating with you. Fuck you. And by this point of the game, like I like the the thing I just done was, oh yeah, we're gonna have like we're planning our fucking wedding. And she's like, you're gonna meet my mom. I'm so happy I met you. And it's like <laughs> we we just did my getting over my emotionally traumatic backstory quest, and then the game kills her. <laughs> it's so <laughs> hackish. <laughs> Her from a different universe uh -huh. is the leader of that faction. Uh, all right. If from the universe where you died. Now, what? when you say it picked, like, it's the one that you have the highest thing with, mm -hmm. you mean the game pushes you towards that character, Oh, no, it right? kills whoever you have the highest affection with. So whoever, the leader of the faction is whoever you have the... Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the leader of the other <laughs> faction is some bullshit NPC that you met like Boo. three missions ago and it didn't matter. Boo! Boo! <laughs> Hack! Yeah. Hack, Todd Howard! <laughs> mm -hmm. Hack! Man, this feels great from this side of having not spent 60 hours playing this game with the hack plot. Yeah, this, this game wrote a check of beautiful, hard sci-fi adventure that, that it fucking it bitched out on cowards. Man, what was the what was the point of like we don't have aliens or robots? This is a grounded, more realistic sci-fi thing. Go to the other dimension to upgrade your starborn powers. <laughs> they do have aliens. <laughs> they have something called a terror morph, which I never encountered in the game, but NPCs kept telling me they were incredibly dangerous and scary. Oh yeah, I went out into I went out into the wild on the very first planet and ran into one. Also, for some reason, mechs are illegal. Yeah, because there was a mech war. Yeah, like, <laughs> like one one side agreed to stop genetically engineering poisonous monster aliens. The other one's like, well, we won't build robots that are quite this big. That's the same thing. Uh, okay, well, that was illuminating, <sighs> Doctor Agro. Yeah, thank you. Uh, who wrote in Vengeful Guardian Moonrider? I think I did. Either Bob or me. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, well, I don't remember. You both seem to be equally tied for. Hmm. I mean, I, I didn't like it. It it, it had like the, the promise of being a high octane ninja action game, you know, like Run Saber or Hell yeah. Hagane. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves Hagane and Run Saber. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just doesn't it doesn't it like it writes it its presentation writes a check it can't cash. Yeah, this is made by the Blazing Chrome people. Yeah. So based on you two being as disappointed as you were, I actually never checked it out. So unfortunately, I'm diffused in this conversation. It does remind me a lot of like of like a higher version of Onikin. Oh God, their worst game. <laughs> I mean, it's also their first one, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was understandable. It was of an era where it was like, oh, it's neat that you made this. Right. But between between Moonrider and, and Cyber Shadow from last year, I'm like, I'm just not going to buy any retro seeming ninja games like i'm sorry that genre is now <laughs> untrustworthy that's unfortunate yes i think there are two more that i have to buy yeah that i've already been like okay you look good you better be good <laughs> is one of them the remake of that nes one yes that'll probably be fine right like that's that's made by Raphael of company it's just remaking something also i think um no it was cyber shadow that was published by yacht club wasn't it i think so yes but yeah i was just like man 
this game sure looks nice. I wish it was fun to play. Yeah, it it just was surprisingly slow paced and not very interesting. It was like fine, but that it needed to be more than fine. Yeah, Blazing Chrome was amazing. Right. Okay, Bob, I assume the wonderful one is you. Yeah, no, I didn't even go into this with high expectations. This is a DLC expansion for, for the, the wonderful, wonderful 101. 101. How many years after launch? I don't know. I don't want to think about that. <laughs> okay, sure. So okay, the U well, game go, number goes here. <laughs> <laughs> Archaeozoic era. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it is a side-scrolling 2D platformer with twin-stick shooting. And somehow, they made the worst version of that they could have because they put the shoot button and the jump button on the face pad so you can't run and shoot in any direction you want without taking your thumb off of the stick that shoots the, or chooses the direction you're shooting in. How do you make that mistake? I don't know. And then every level is just really bare bones and repetitive. And it reuses the boss fights constantly. The final boss is just the boss you already fought earlier in, this, in the DLC. And then the, uh, the only voice dialogue in it is the main character talk, the main character of the DLC, which is Luca, the small child from Wonderful 101. And he talks to an R2-D2-like droid who responds and beeps. So you have to listen to that the entire game. <laughs> Why did they make this? I don't know. I, I don't, the, like, did, did, would any but, like, I, this couldn't have moved the needle on that Kickstarter they did at all. Right. Because this was a Kickstarter reward for some reason. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> I don't know if it really stepped to the rest of these, but it was disappointing in its own right. Yeah, I feel like we had a lot of great games this year, but it feels like the bad ones are incredibly powerful. <laughs> right? And I guess that leads me to explaining why Wanted Dead is here on the most disappointing games. So, Bob, we played Devil's Third. Mm -hmm. The devil always gets his third. Does the Wanted always get its dead? <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. We played Devil's Third. <laughs> You're like, if only I had an experience, <laughs> Drew Kino. This is watered down Devil's Third. That's not it's something just, anyone wants. No, it's just worse than that game in every way. How is that even possible? That game isn't like a 10 out of 10 or anything. No. But the, the, the story is afraid. It doesn't go as crazy as Devil's Third. It doesn't have the, the main character be as that ludicrous. I mean, that's hard. Right. Devil's it, third man goes hard. He might be the hardest character in a video game. <laughs> It really doesn't approach that at any point. Like, it seems to not even want to do that. The melee combat feels worse. The shooting yeah. feels worse. Okay. They have a lot of enemies Whoa. that require <laughs> you to use the melee instead of just being like, no, you, you're coming at me with the sword. Of course I'll shoot you in the face. And that was the best part of Devil's Third. Right. Yeah, it was. Absolutely. Um, They're like, that's a failure of gameplay design. You need to engage them in melee. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Wrong. That's False. not what this game was about. <laughs> in fact, that's not what any video game about is about. Every good video game is about me using whatever option I fucking want to deal with the problem. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Let me explain. I saw, what was it, Prey 2018, 2019? Mm -hmm. Dude shoots a dart through a window crack in order to hit the open button door on the inside of a room he's locked out of. That's a good game gimmick. <laughs> The motherfucking game's like, no, nah, he's going to block all your bullets with the sword. you got to fight him in melee. No. Yeah. Um, Give me C4. I'm going to blow him up. And I think that I, I'm, I think that he doesn't even block him. He's just like, I, yeah, I just don't take damage from those. Like, bullets I'm, don't really I'm affect me. I'm immune to bullets. <laughs> <laughs> the that, lead poisoning over the years. He built the tolerance, so yes. he's no longer hurt by lead. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's why it's on the most disappointing. There are, of course, some delightful things that are just like, man, how do you, how this pass, which is every boss fight, phase one really hard, phase two really easy, <laughs> <laughs> which is just how do you make this mistake and hilarious. <laughs> that sounds like it could be gratifying. If yeah. Well. <laughs> right. I'm like, there's no way that you intended this, but this is what you have landed on. <laughs> That's kind of funny because, you know, you were there when I avenged my youth off stream with uh, uh, Street Fighter 2010. Right. And one of the things we realized is they didn't know how to make an actually hard boss. Mm -hmm. So the levels had to be hard. So when the final boss of Street Fighter 2010 for the NES is every boss in a row and then the final boss, the final boss is a complete pushover. Yes. Because they know by then you've been through it all. So fuck it. This dude has no strats. He has no health bar. <laughs> That's funny as hell. Yeah. Well, we get a vote. 
everyone still stand by putting Final Fantasy 16 in uh, first? Yeah, that's I'm going to vote for that for sure. So, Yeah, I feel like the only strong competitor to that would be Starfield. Right. And like only by dint of the fact that I wasn't looking forward to Starfield. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Okay, so let's see. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight choices to choose from. You know, excluding Final Fantasy 16, which we just graduated to wave two. Uh, I'm going to say we get three votes. Does it sound good? Mm-hmm. Maybe I could do four, but let's go with three. Yeah. It'll speed it up. I'm going to go first. It is literally the top of this list. Diablo 4. Skipping fourth. <laughs> Gravity Circuit and Paradiso Guardian. If that game, if Paradiso Guardian didn't look that amazing, <laughs> like if its animations were just worse, if it just had nothing to offer mechanic wise or anything else, I wouldn't be disappointed at all. Right. You can find gay porn anywhere on the internet. <laughs> There's probably gay porn on GameFAQs right now, and you just don't even know. It's just in the, the fucking thread for like, hey guys, I finally played this Sims game on the DS in the year 2023 and Penis, 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 penis. <laughs> you just don't know where to look. But this was actually really upsetting. It is mm-hmm. horrible to know there's no way for me to fix this. The devs could fix it by just updating the engine to the latest version of Unity. Right. It's never going to happen, though. Nope. If it does, if it does, listener, if they fix this, just let me know. I would love to play this game. Agra. Starfield. L- let it be known that deep inside me beats the heart of a pony. Okay. It has gotten to the point where every time Microsoft might get kind of a win, I'm like, yeah, stop sucking. It's really embarrassing to be on the other (laughs) side of this. Jesus. Starfield was supposed to be that. It was. And now it's, it's, it's nothing. It's gone. It's avatar one. Yeah. It's Activision. Microsoft just bought to get King. Like, we, we know that. They said it. They sure said like it. Like in the court document, in the court documents. They bought Bethesda to get, in part to get Starfield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they probably thought they were getting an Elder Scrolls at some point. <laughs> A reasonable assumption we can't punish them for, honestly. <laughs> right? Uh, I was there for a lot of Devil's Third, so wanted dead. <laughs> and you have one more. Yeah. Diablo 4. Chris. Starfield. Forza Motorsport. Because <laughs> no music. What the fuck? <laughs> and Vengeful Guardian. Bob. Starfield. <laughs> Wanted Dead. And Diablo 4. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> Gay sex game. You will be remembered. But not <laughs> by many. <laughs> Let's uh, take these contenders over real quick. Based on votes, we have two tied with three votes each. That's Diablo 4 and Starfield. Then with two votes, one a dead. And then we have one vote each in Forza Motorsport, Gran- Gravity Circuit, Pardiso Guardian, and Vengeful Guardian Moonrider. The word Guardian, not doing great this year. <laughs> I am going to go ahead and normally we do a vote, but I'm just going to make the argument and see if people agree. I think we should push Starfield above Diablo 4. I'm all for that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. It was certainly in development longer. After Diablo 3, uh huh. I cannot say that my hopes for Diablo 4 were as understandably high as it was for everyone for Starfield. Right, like Starfield does have that effect of this is the first new uh, IP from Bethesda in 20 years Forever. or something. Forever, yeah. More than... I think it's more than that, yeah. <laughs> it's also, as they said, the first truly next generation RPG. Oh. I feel strongly about Diablo 4. But after hearing the things I have heard about Starfield and having played its unsalted saltine ass, <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that Diablo 4 is as disappointing as Starfield is in the grand scheme of things. Right, like Diablo 4 is more disappointing to me personally. Mm-hmm. But I get it. Like Starfield is just out there 
being complete trash. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, you know, I, I sit here and the thing I wrestle with is how disappointed can I possibly be given that Diablo 3 came right before it? And I enjoyed Diablo 4 more than Diablo 3. Of that, I am sure of. Mm -hmm. Because the plot isn't absolutely the worst. <laughs> and there are choices to make even though it does not feel like the leveling up makes you strong properly. Right, yeah. The skill tree is way more developed in Diablo 4 that actually feels properly good. done it's the one good part of the game i feel yeah that's the one part of the game i feel good engaging with and that makes it a complete reversal from launch diablo 3 <laughs> so that's that's how i feel about that does everyone else yeah i think that everyone seems on board with making starfield the number two <laughs> chris yeah okay so that now we got to talk number three obviously Diablo 4 being number three makes perfect fucking sense. Yes. <laughs> well, let me tell you about Parodies of Guardian. Yeah, yeah, I'm not really. <laughs> so we're okay with the top three being Final Fantasy 16, Starfield, Diablo 4? Yeah, that's fine with me. Yeah, looks yeah. good. Do we want to change this one runner up or should we just leave one and dead here for... I uh, feel like why dead deserves it to be there. But. Okay, I feel like you were more disappointed in that possibly than I was in any of the other things down there. Yeah, because I honestly went in being like, Devil's Third was great. They said it's like that, but better. And then it ended up being worse in every way. And I was like, this would have been my game of the year if it was just Devil's Third again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not hard to see why if you watch the Devil's Third stream. Well, that means the biggest disappointment in 2023 goes to Final Fantasy 16 with Starfield in second, Diablo 4 in third, and One and Dead as runner up. And the final category for this episode, best in-game product, Depsy. Talk about Depsy. <laughs> Depsy. <laughs> the executive producers for this gig boots video are Esme, Ely Broyles, Spaceman Spiff, Redblaze27, Brendan O'Sullivan. A reminder for Symphony of War. Cooper Tank. Very Best Plot. Iconic Bane. And Rado. Thank you very much to our executive producers. And also these guys. If you want to become an executive producer or normal patron, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.